Okay. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, we are now on day four of the Republicans attempting to choose uh, a speaker from their own majority. So I'll just wait a second and uh, wait for you to give me the thumbs up. Let me know that you can hear and see everything okay, and we'll get going. Looks like we are good to go. I like that everybody immediately gives me the thumbs up because they know I'm going to ask the exact same thing every single time, which is that that we're all good to go. OK, so like I said, we are now on day four of the interminable effort for Republicans to try and choose a speaker from their own House majority. Uh, we are, I believe, on vote number 12, which is the we have to go back to the 1800s to find a time where it took this many ballots for the party in power to finally choose a speaker. Um, so yesterday uh, and in the previous two days, we had about 20 to 21 defections from within the Republican Party. Uh, that number pretty much stayed constant. We had constant votes <laughs> over the same exact thing. We just kept getting the exact same results. Uh, so if you needed any any real life uh 
manifestation of insanity it is uh, it is doing these votes over and over and over and expecting the exact same thing a few changes as we head into today and that is that we have at least one Republican uh, and that is Wesley Hunt who has gone home uh, because I believe that he is caring for a newborn baby so yes that's a newly elected Texas Republican newborn baby and wife so that's one fewer member that the Republicans are gonna have uh, voting you know voting for them um, as we uh, as we look forward to today so you remember Kevin McCarthy has to reach that 218 threshold uh, every member that isn't there is gonna make it more difficult uh, in terms of him being able um, him being able to, to, you know, capture those defectors. He can afford to lose five Republicans. That doesn't seem to be what's happening thus far. It seems to be a, a pretty consistent stream of 20 Republicans uh, falling by the wayside, 2021 20, Republicans falling by the wayside. Okay, so it looks like our C-SPAN feed is live here. So let me just make sure that this isn't too loud. Yeah, sounds good. So we have Andy Biggs on the screen here. He's one of those never McCarthy Republicans. So there are a number of Republicans. As we get into the votes here, um, I'll give a heads up on which Republicans to look out for the list of Republicans who have consistently voted against Kevin McCarthy. Um, they have floated a bunch of other alternatives who've, you know, not caught fire in the slightest. They've, uh, they've, they've attempted to nominate Byron Donalds. They've attempted uh, Kevin Hearn. They've attempted Donald Trump. Uh, that was Matt Gates who uh, introduced Donald Trump's name, uh, I believe, two times. So, in, uh, you know, at the very least, we were able to watch Donald Trump lose two more elections yesterday, uh, both of them for the Speaker of the House. Now, in terms of any news uh, on a deal, I know the last thing we were speaking about yesterday was that Republicans wanted to wrap this up because they saw that uh, a deal was on the horizon and they needed the night to be able to actually figure it out. It turns out that uh, we've gotten some, I guess what I would call promising news out of Kevin McCarthy and these Republicans, which is not that a deal is struck yet, but that, uh, that, uh, that they have an agreement quote, uh, 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 I'm saying we're in a great spot, but that we, but that we, uh, but that we don't have a deal. So who knows? I mean, this is just Kevin McCarthy, uh, uh, wish casting, uh, at this point. So until there's a, until we have any votes that don't look identical to the previous votes, I'm just going to go out on a limb and assume that, uh, that, you know, there's nothing there, but Kevin McCarthy had been agreeing with, uh, with, Chip Roy, uh, Ch had been meeting with Chip Roy uh, and a number of other conservatives. They were meeting in Tom Emmer's office for most of the day yesterday. So we'll see what happens today in terms of uh, these votes. We have the House that will be called into session in just a couple of minutes here. They'll probably start with, um, with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance and, uh, and a prayer by the chaplain, and then we will uh, we'll get going. And if you joined me at all yesterday, you know that this is uh, a, a pretty lengthy process where we have to hear from all 435 members of the House, and, uh, and, and we'll see what happens. If nothing else, this is all a testament to the fact that you know, this is what you get in terms of the dysfunction of the Republican Party. This is a party that has basically trafficked in chaos for the last few years, and uh, so it's pretty fitting that the moment that they have the majority in the House, uh, they're putting that chaos on full display, even to the detriment of their own party. I mean, uh, uh, you know, this isn't this isn't hurting the Democrats. Uh, Democrats effectively passed their agenda in the first two years. So, you know, I, I, I've spoken about this on my podcast, and uh, I think it bears repeating now. There is a silver lining to Republicans taking the House, and it's two things. The first is that, like I just said, Democrats were able to pass most of what we wanted to pass. Uh, we didn't get a voting rights bill. We didn't get a codification of Roe. Uh, we didn't get a $15 minimum wage. But all of those things required uh, eliminating the filibuster, which we wouldn't have been able to do anyway unless we maintained the House or retained the House and expanded our Senate majority by one more seat than we were actually able to expand it. So, so that's moot at this point. But but I think the, the, the second piece of silver lining is that now Americans, as we head into 2024, are going to have uh, 
a reminder of what a Republican majority looks like. Because, you know, we all have short attention spans, we all have short memories, and so it's easy for Republicans to say, look, we're the responsible stewards of government out here. You need to elect Republicans because uh, we need to be a check on the Democrats' uh, abuses of power. Abuses of power being like allowing the government to negotiate lower drug prices and funding climate spending and, uh, and um, passing a gun safety bill for the first time in 30 years amid a record wave of gun violence. So, so um, it's easy for them to present themselves as these responsible stewards of government and for people to forget what it was like when Republicans are in power because, again, we have short, short attention spans and short memories. But having these Republicans take over the House kind of, kind of brings that to the forefront in terms of what it looks like when Republicans actually are in power. And when they are in power, it's just chaos. It's people who want to break government, and so they do break government. And the contrast is important here because you have a, a President yeah, Joe Biden, who just the other day was down in Kentucky with Mitch McConnell, uh, literally building bridges, <laughs> figuratively and literally building bridges. We have uh, just this jobs report out this morning that showed 233,000 new jobs created. The unemployment rate, uh, amid these calls by, amid this wish casting by Republicans that we're in a recession, the unemployment rate is down to a 54-year low, 3.5 percent. And so. And so you have all of these things contrasted with the fact that when Republicans are in power in the House here, they can't even manage to elect their own speaker. We're on day four of them trying to do the bare minimum. This is the equivalent when you're taking the SATs of writing your name on the test. That's what this is the equivalent to. And they can't even manage to do that. It's taking them four days. Uh, well, you got to go back to the 1800s to find uh, another example of this. So, um, so in any case, I, I think that this is important. It's going to be important in terms of uh, people seeing what it's actually like in practice when Republicans are in power somewhere. So with that said, uh, uh, I'm going to go. Uh, exactly on this day, as the psalmist has said, make sure you can hear that here. Their plans come to nothing. You, O Lord, thwart the plans of nations. You thwart the purposes of the people. On this day of profound remembrance, may we lean on the strength to be found only in you. Come alongside us and show your mercy on the American people as they and we approach today with a host of feelings. The abiding emotional and spiritual unease stemming from the memory of inconceivable unrest in these chambers two years ago. The exhausting frustration over the prolonged impasse in the deliberations that obscures the way ahead. The fear that resides in the hearts of families and staffers, communities and constituents who are affected by the lack of resources and security while this legislative body remains unseated. We wait in hope for you, O God, for you are our help and shield. And in you we will find reason to rejoice, for despite all that makes today today, we trust in you. May your unfailing love rest upon us, for it is in your sovereign name we pray. Amen. The chair has examined the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House the approval thereof. Representatives elect are invited to join in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from New York seek recognition? Madam Clerk, a point of order. There is not a quorum. Present. The gentlewoman makes a point of order that a quorum is not present. The chair will count for a quorum. Okay, so, so they'll take care of this right now. Uh, they'll count these votes right now. Uh, I'm sorry, they'll count these, uh, the members present right now, um, and, and they'll get this going. But uh, just to carry on with what I was saying just a few moments ago, and that is that um, the distinction is going to be important. So in terms of why 
uh, in terms of these Republicans finally having a House majority. And when we head into 2024, being able to point to not not just this romanticized idea of what it might look like with a Republican majority just by virtue of what they're selling, which is like fiscal conservatism and family values and all that other uh, all that other nonsense that's that's completely undermined in practice when they you know, line up behind a guy like Donald Trump, who is uh, not exactly family values friendly, uh, or, you know, when they uh, uh, cheer on the insurrectionists over the police on January 6th. So it's easy to forget what the Republicans are like in practice, in, in, in reality, and just kind of defer to this romanticized idea based on what they're selling, which is just like fiscal conservatism and, uh, and, and that they'll be the responsible stewards of government and that Democrats are being, uh, are, are out of touch extremists, whatever, whatever they're selling. But when you actually look at how they act in practice, which is what we're seeing right now, it is pure chaos and, and dysfunction. And I think it's going to be important to give Americans like a, 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 a taste of that, basically. And they won't have enough power to really enact any of their agenda. I mean, they're not going to be able to pass any bills. No bills are going to get through uh, through the Senate and certainly not signed into law by Joe Biden, but it will give us, uh, uh, you know, it will give us something to point to when we're trying to draw that distinction uh, ahead of November 2024 and be able to say, like, look at the last, the first two years of Biden's term when we were able to pass the American Rescue Plan, the infrastructure bill, uh, a gun safety law for the first time in 30 years, the PACT Act, the CHIPS Act, the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, versus what we're going to see with this Uh, Republican House, which is that it took, you know, close to a week, if not more, who knows, just to choose their own speaker because they were so embroiled in dysfunction. And then after that, what's it going to be when they finally do manage to elect a speaker? It's going to be investigations into Hunter Biden and, uh, you know, uh, uh, a a two year saga complaining about pronouns. Uh, So I think that distinction will be important. Chair Elise Stefanik members of the clerk staff counting the number of members present. Kevin McCarthy is on the House floor and meeting with members now, uh, and we wait for that quorum call to be official. And as we wait, reports from various congressional media about what may or may not happen today. Chad Pergram of Fox News, uh, their Capitol Hill bureau chief, saying that there's a low chance that the House Speaker drama will end today, according to his sources. Other members of the congressional media, Sahil Kapoor of NBC News, quoting Republican Congressman Patrick McHenry, uh, a close ally of Kevin McCarthy, saying, I feel better today than yesterday and the day before. So the trend is our friend, but saying that there's no deal yet. One more uh, from Nicholas Wu of Politico, saying that uh, House Dems, House Democrats have once again Uh, said that they will vote against a motion to adjourn if it's offered. Uh, That's according to a notice from the WHIP's office. So Democrats want to stay on the floor and continue uh, these speaker votes. At least that's what we expect they'll be doing if Republicans once again uh, try to offer a motion to adjourn and come back later. Again, live coverage of the House floor here on C-SPAN. Well, that's not great for me. I get tired here, <laughs> but I'll I'll continue to host this entire thing, to live stream this entire thing. So, if it takes through the weekend, then I'm here with you through the weekend. Uh, I would just ask that if you're not yet subscribed to this channel and you want to keep on top of this stuff, whether it ends today or not, then please subscribe to this channel. It's the best way to support what I do and the best way to stay on top of uh, to stay on top of these votes as they happen. Um, and who knows when they'll end. Again, we're on to ballot number 12. Right now, we're just making sure that there's a quorum in the House. Once that's done, uh, they'll nominate, you know, you'll have Republicans stand up and nominate Kevin McCarthy. You'll have a Democrat stand up and nominate Hakeem Jeffries. And then you'll have probably some House Freedom Caucus member nominate Byron Donalds or Kevin Hearn or Donald Trump or whatever other fringe figure they can they can pluck out of uh, obscurity. And, uh, and that person will get 20, 21 votes. And uh, we'll be on to ballot number 13. So, or not. Maybe, maybe they'll be able to achieve the impossible and actually manage the elusive feat of uh, electing a speaker from within their own House majority. So, but, you know, don't want to 
don't want to set the expectations too high because uh, because it's taken us 12 ballots thus far. Okay, it looks like we're gonna move forward right about now. The house will be in order. The chair counts 275 members present. A quorum is present. The question recurs upon the election of a speaker. The tellers will please come forward and take their seats. Jamie Raskin posted a tweet yesterday that I thought was fantastic, and it was, we never had this much chaos when George Santos was speaker. For what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? Madam Clerk, I rise to nominate Kevin McCarthy for Speaker of the House. <laughs> the gentleman is recognized. And while I rise to that end, I think it's critically important to note that this is actually not about Kevin McCarthy. Kevin is a good man. He's a man of God. He's a patriot. He's a leader who has led this conference to our current majority over the last four years. Those things are unassailable. But this isn't about him. This isn't about Kevin McCarthy. I put no single human being on a pedestal, and certainly not before God and not before the gift that he has blessed us with, with this grand experiment that we call the United States of America. This isn't about Kevin McCarthy, but the matters before us are of stupendous magnitude. A federal republic such as ours, it's, it's definitely about Kevin McCarthy. It's stable one. It's a wobbly top that's just a few mere revolutions away from falling down at any given moment except for the exertions of men and women who are willing to serve her with pure and selfless intent, just as our founding fathers did, just as Abraham Lincoln and Ronald Reagan did with pure and selfless intent. And as our nation today and over the last two years... That's rich coming from the party that instigated January 6th on the anniversary of January 6th. ...southern border that is wide open. As a result of that and as a result of our executive branch policies, today, 200 fellow Americans will die of fentanyl poisoning, and roughly 5,000 illegal immigrants will be victims of human smuggling. Today, our nation's debt is $31 trillion, and that will go up just in this day alone. By Funny when Republicans talk about the debt, considering when they had full control of government under Trump, they added $7.8 trillion to the debt. But now it's a problem again. Are direly underfunded, and they are hurting. And on that topic, I want to 
thank our law enforcement. I want to especially thank the Capitol Hill police for what they do. We thank them not only for what they've done. Yeah, big thank you to the Capitol Police for when we incited that insurrection and, uh, and tried to have you guys all killed. Thank you so much. We're really appreciative. Our police also serve with that pure and selfless intent. They do it every day, and we should thank them every day. Today, the Chinese Communist Party will orchestrate the theft of another $1 billion of intellectual property from American companies. And the Chinese Communist Party is still today not being held accountable for the deaths of millions of people around this planet, deaths as a result of a genocide within their borders, and deaths as a result of COVID outside them. We are today losing on multiple fronts against China. So today isn't about a single human being. It's not about Kevin McCarthy. It's about the 13 Gold Star families who still suffer today mercifully without closure and without accountability after the unnecessary loss of their loved ones in Afghanistan over a year ago. And today, speaking of our military, today roughly 40 active duty and veterans of our military will commit suicide. These, Madam Clerk, these are the matters of stupendous magnitude. This isn't about a, a man in a suit in the halls of Congress. It's about 330 million Americans. It's about the preservation of the Constitution and the liberties guaranteed therein. It's about the 246 years of pride and providence that we have enjoyed as a nation. And above all things, it's about ensuring that this beautiful journey exists for generations to come. That doesn't happen if we don't address and rise above the multiple existential crises that we experience today. We must be victorious in this cause, and victory begins with allowing this body to get to work. It begins today. Now, winning isn't easy, okay? Winning isn't easy, but winning is necessary. And of all folks in this chamber, I know that, that winning isn't easy. I represent a district where only 29% of my voters are registered as in the same party as I. But I engage and I communicate with the other 71% because it's the only way that we all win. And in the end, it's the only way that the nation wins. It ain't easy, but it's necessary. But the noble wins, the most important wins, never are easy. But we take on these missions just as passionately as Colonel Chamberlain did at Little Round Top in Gettysburg. We must hold this line because if we don't hold this line, the entire union is at stake. We don't hold the majority for bragging rights. We, we hold the majority to govern responsibly. We hold the majority to protect the American people. Their agenda is to investigate Hunter Biden until there is nothing left to be said. I don't know how that's... Uh, how. The difference between what these people say and what they do is that you could fly a 777 through it. Now, to my Democrat colleagues across the aisle, I, I want to make sure you understand and make no mistake, we are in fact on the verge of a very important victory. A victory for the people, a victory by the people, and most importantly, a victory for the future of our nation. And it dawns on me as I look across the aisle after being here for nearly three years that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting many of you because you've chosen to stay at home and not vote here in person, electing instead to proxy vote. The member elect is reminded to direct his remarks to the chair. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to see 212 of you here today. It's also a pleasure to see the end of the proxy voting. And let me, let me end with this. Let me end with this. I'm extremely proud of my colleagues on this side of the aisle. The last, the last four days, they haven't been ideal. They've been difficult. But I do see fighters. I see patriots who love this country and want to make things better. I, I see folks who are willing to do whatever is necessary to ensure that we better serve the nation. 
I see men and women who are willing to serve her with that pure and selfless intent, even if that service means undergoing the dentistry that we've experienced over the last four days and in the wake of the last 20 meetings over the last two months. Let me be clear, these are not concessions to the rules. These are critical evolution of the rules for the good of the nation. And I'm proud that we as a party have decided and been willing to extend the time aperture so that we can get to a solution, a product of compromise, but also a product that will fix the ills induced by the Democrat majority over the last four years. And this product will hopefully end the multifaceted legacy of reckless and toxic behavior in the swamp. And so this isn't about Kevin McCarthy. It's not about the 434 members in this chamber. It's about the 330 million Americans across this beautiful land. And it's about our nation's future. The person who will lead us on that journey will be Kevin McCarthy. He has earned this position, and I have the honor of nominating him at the direction of the Republican Conference as the Speaker of the House of the 118th Congress. God bless the United States. I like how these guys are trying to convince themselves that it's not about Kevin McCarthy. It's definitely about Kevin McCarthy. This is the most personal. They're like, oh, it's not personal. It's not personal. This is definitely personal. Madam Clerk, I rise to nominate my friend, colleague, and leader of the House Democratic Caucus, Hakeem Jeffries, for speaker of the United States. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Clerk, I want to begin by thanking you for your contribution to maintaining the dignity and honor of this august body. The eyes of the country. The eyes of the country are on us today. Let us consider what they will remember. I often refer to this hall as America's classroom. The proceedings we undertake in this body and our actions should serve as lessons for those who may be watching and are listening. Hopefully, that which they see and here will help them gain understanding and appreciation for the greatness of America and the goodness of the American people. This body has a unique role in this government. What we do and how we do it will determine whether our pursuit toward a more perfect union can continue in earnest. No day in recent history underscores the importance of that pursuit more than January 6, 2021. Exactly two years ago today, our resolve was tested when the violent mob of insurrectionists attacked our capital, threatened the integrity of this democracy and underlined our Constitution. The greatness of this country and the resiliency of our democracy were put at peril. But we survived. The preamble of the Constitution explains that the document was established in part to secure the blessings of liberty, not just for ourselves, but also to posterity. In this body, we are tasked with protecting our nation's hard-earned principles of liberty, 
justice, and freedom for all. Every two years, the American people evaluate our stewardship and render a verdict. Last November, they invested their time and resources going to the polls and casting their votes. They expect and should get a just return on their investments. For many, maybe most Americans, this is the only investment they will ever make to help preserve the greatness of this country. For the first time in over 200 years, after 11 rounds of voting, we are unable to organize and begin to work on behalf of those who elected us to serve. Democrats are offering a candidate for speaker, Hakeem Jeffries, who is not just prepared to lead, but committed to preserving this democracy and enhancing this august body. Madam Clerk, there is some dispute among historians as to whether Alexis de Tocqueville said this. But I consider it to be true regardless. De Tocqueville is credited in some quarters with having said, America is great because she is good. If America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. The greatness of America lies in the goodness that exists within the American people. Today, the greatness of our nation hangs in the balance because the goodness of the American people is at stake. We Democrats are offering the people of America through this unique body, a good man who has the best interest of the American people at heart and is committed to preserving the fundamental principles that make this country great. Madam Clerk, I am honored to carry out the directives of the House Democratic Caucus and submit to this August body the name of Hakeem Jeffries to be Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Okay, now we should probably expect Matt Gates to stand up and nominate someone who has no chance of becoming speaker, but the clown, clown show continues. purpose does the gentleman from Florida rise? To submit a name for a nomination for the position of Speaker of the House. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My colleague from California, Mr. Garcia, knows the incredibly high regard I hold him in. He is a patriot. I deeply, deeply admire him. But I must take some exception with some of the comments he made in his nomination of Mr. McCarthy. First, he said that Mr. McCarthy has earned the position. You only earn the position of Speaker of the House if you can get the votes. Mr. McCarthy doesn't have the votes today. He will not have the votes tomorrow, and he will not have the votes next week, next month, next year. And so one must wonder, Madam Clerk, is this an exercise in vanity for someone who has done the math, taken the counts, and is putting this institution through something that absolutely is avoidable. My colleague, Mr. Garcia, did not say this, but many of my other Republican colleagues have. They believe that Mr. McCarthy has earned the position of Speaker of the House because he raised half a billion dollars to get Republicans elected.
the, the, the gentleman is not recognized. Members are reminded not to engage in personalities against other members of the House. Members are reminded not to engage in personalities against other members of the House. Several believe that one earns the position of speaker by raising enormous sums of money, and there is no doubt that the individual that was nominated by Mr. Garcia is the LeBron James of special interest fundraising in this town. There is nobody better, but I would suggest that there are qualifications for speaker that are far more important. There are attributes that are far more important. Jim Jordan has those, and I am <laughs> submitting his name for nomination at this time. I heard my colleague from California, Mr. Garcia, say that we seek pure selfless intent, and I could not agree more with that assessment. Mr. Jordan, indeed, is reflective of pure selfless intent. I don't know that the same can be said for the Republican alternative. Let's start with purity. Many of you have seen the reports that there are negotiations to determine whether or not on this side of the aisle there can be a deal, a meeting of the minds, a grand bargain that would allow us to proceed with the speakership. And I want all of my colleagues to know, regardless of your perspective on me, how impure some of those negotiations have gone. And I want the country to know the principal goal of the people who are objecting to Mr. McCarthy on the Republican side is that we don't believe the rules of this place unlock the potential of all of the members to be able to cast votes on individual bills and to offer amendments on Appropriations Act. And we're also concerned about spending that has ballooned our debt and borrowed against the future generations of American citizens. And Mr. McCarthy said, well, goodness to the objectors, a lot of you want to be on the Oversight and Judiciary Committee, and you never submit your names to be on the Rules Committee or the Appropriations Committee. And so, gosh, if you'll get a list of folks who are willing to come early on, mon on fly-in days for rules and folks who are willing to take on the extra burden of our appropriators who work so hard, then I'll certainly work to do that. And so we endeavored in good faith, in pure good faith, to create that list. And then what did Mr. McCarthy do? He went out to the media and came to other members of the conference and said, see, they just want jobs for themselves. That is not pure. Selflessness. Selflessness is not selling shares of yourself to the lobby corps and then doing their bidding at the expense of the American people. But there certainly is intent. And it's an intent driven almost exclusively by personal ambition. And that ambition is paralyzing the House now. Madam Clerk, at this time, there is great trust in Mr. Jordan. And that's why I am nominating him. And there is insufficient trust in Kevin McCarthy. There are some who have been objecting to Mr. McCarthy who are working on perhaps changes to the rules, changes to circumstance that would convert the speakership from the great, awesome, powerful position it is now to more of a ceremonial position, almost akin to the speaker in the British House of Commons. Uh, I referred to it previously as a straitjacket that some of us were trying to construct with better rules and better personnel because we do not trust Mr. McCarthy with power because we know who he will use it for and we are concerned it will not be for the American people. We trust Jim Jordan. I nominate him, and I'm going to vote for him. What a circus. What a clown show. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Colorado rise? Madam Clerk, I rise to <laughs> enter a name for nomination for speaker. The gentlewoman is recognized. Once again, I just stand here today to nominate Kevin Hearn, the chairman of the Republican Study Committee, the largest caucus in the Republican conference, who unanimously was elected as chairman, whom I believe can unite this Republican conference and put forward the agenda that we all promise to work hard on and serve our American people to the best of our abilities with. I believe that Kevin Hearn will be a fighter for our national debt, I get texts on a regular basis at how inflation is hurting families, how grocery prices are skyrocketing continuously. He has crafted 
a budget that balances and will bring that to the floor to help the American people. Madam Clerk, I nominate Kevin Hearn as speaker. Thank you. Well, if anyone was anticipating uh, a smooth transition home. here today, I think you just got your answer. We have Kevin Hearn, who's been nominated on the Republican side. We have Jim Jordan, who's been nominated on the Republican side. We have Kevin McCarthy. I'm sure someone's going to stand up and nominate, uh, you know, Hunter Biden's laptop or, or whatever else it is. But it doesn't seem like we're likely to see um, any consolidation within the Republican Party uh, behind Kevin McCarthy. So this is our 12th um, ballot right now, the 12th vote for Jeffries. speaker, and it seems poised to fail yet again. McCarthy. Now we're in the B's. Uh, as we head toward the Jeffries. B's right now, which are going to be the first round Alford. of defectors, the names to look for in the Republican conference are Andy Alford. Biggs, Bishop, Bobert, Brasheen. Allen. McCarthy. Allred. Jeffries. Hamilton. McCarthy. Armstrong, McCarthy, Arrington, McCarthy, Auchincloss, Jeffries, Babin, McCarthy, Bacon, McCarthy, Baird, McCarthy, Balderson, McCarthy. Ballant. Jeffries. Jeffries. Banks. McCarthy. Barr. McCarthy. Vatagon. Jeffries. Bean of Florida. McCarthy. Beatty. Jeffries, Bentz, McCarthy, Barra, Jeffries, Bergman, McCarthy, Byer, Jeffries, Vice, McCarthy. Here we go. Biggs, Jordan. That's one for Jordan. Bill Arrakis. McCarthy. Bishop of Georgia. Jeffries. Jeffries. Bishop of North Carolina. McCarthy. Wow. So that's one that was pulled in. Blumenauer. In all 11 previous Jeffries. votes, Bishop had voted for Byron Donalds or Blunt the other Rochester. or somebody else. Now he's finally Jeffries. a Kevin McCarthy, so that's why there was the applause. Bobert. Hearn. Bobert stays with Hearn. Bonamici. Jeffries. Bost. McCarthy. Bowman. Jeffries. Next name to look out for is Brasheen. Boyle of Pennsylvania. Jeffries. Brakeen. Another one, another defector brought in by Republicans. That's two in a row so far between Bishop and Brakeen uh, that Kevin McCarthy has clawed back into his Brown. corner. Brown. Jeffries. The next Brown. names to look out for are Cloud and Clyde. Jeffries. Buchanan. McCarthy. McCarthy. Buck. 
Buck. Bouchon. McCarthy. Budzinski. Jeffries. Burchett. Burchett. Burgess. McCarthy. Burleson. McCarthy. Bush. Jeffries. Calvert. McCarthy. Kamek. McCarthy. Caraveo. Jeffries. Carbajal. Jeffries. Cardenas. Jeffries. Carey. McCarthy. Carl. McCarthy. Carson. Jeffries. Carter of Georgia. McCarthy. Carter of Louisiana. Jeffries. Carter of Texas. McCarthy. Cartwright. Jeffries. Jeffries. Kassar. Kassar. Case. Jeffries. Caston. Jeffries. Castor of Florida. Jeffries. Castro of Texas. Jeffries. Chavez de Reamer. McCarthy. Sherfellis McCormick. Jeffries. Chu. Jeffries. Cicilline. Jeffries. Siscomani. Remember, the name McCarthy. to look out for is Cloud. Clark of Massachusetts. Jeffries. He's coming up. Clark of New York. Jeffries. Here we go. Cleaver. Jeffries. Klein. McCarthy. Cloud. McCarthy. There's another flip for McCarthy. Clyburn. Next Jeffries. is Klein. Clyde. Yeah. So he's so that's four flips for McCarthy right now. McCarthy has clawed back four people who he's lost in previous votes. Cohen. Uh, Jeffries. Jeffries. Cole. McCarthy. Collins. McCarthy. Comer. McCarthy. Connolly. Jeffries. Correa. Jeffries. Costa. Jeffries. Courtney. Jeffries. Craig. Jeffries. Crane. Hearn. Crawford. McCarthy. Crenshaw. McCarthy. Crockett. Jeffries. Crow. Jeffries. Quayar. Remember, Jeffries. Kevin McCarthy can afford to lose Curtis. five Republicans. Right McCarthy. now he's at three. And we're only in the Davids C's. of Kansas. Or the D's. Jeffries. Davidson. McCarthy. Davis of Illinois. Jeffries. Davis of North Carolina. Jeffries. Jeffries. 
Dean of Pennsylvania, Jeffries. Deguette, Jeffries. Jeffries. De La Cruz, Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. DeLauro, Hawking Jeffries. Jeffries. Del Bene, Jeffries. Jeffries. Deluzio, Jeffries. Jeffries. Desanye, Jeffries. Jeffries. Desjarlais, McCarthy. McCarthy. Diaz Pazito. The next name to look out for McCarthy. is Donalds. Diaz Balart. Diaz Balart. Dingle. Jeffries. Doggett. Jeffries. Donalds. McCarthy. McCarthy. Wow. There's another one. That makes, that makes five flips in McCarthy's favor so far. He can Martin. afford to lose five, he's lost three. McCarthy. Duncan. McCarthy. Dunn of Florida. McCarthy. Edwards. McCarthy. Elsie. McCarthy. Emmer. McCarthy. Escobar. Jeffries. Eshu. Jeffries. Espayat. Jeffries. Estes. McCarthy. Evans. Jeffries. Ezel. McCarthy. Fallon. McCarthy. Feenstra. McCarthy. Ferguson. McCarthy. Finstad. McCarthy. Fishbach. McCarthy. Fitzgerald. McCarthy. Fitzpatrick. McCarthy. Fleischman, McCarthy, Fletcher, Jeffries, Flood, McCarthy, Foster, Jeffries, Fushi, Jeffries, Fox, McCarthy, Lois Frankel, Jeffries, C. Scott Franklin, McCarthy, Frost. The next names to look out for are Matt Gates, Bob Good, and uh, Paul Gosar Fulcher. in the G's. McCarthy. All of those were anti-McCarthy votes yesterday. Jordan. There's one. Gallagher, McCarthy. Gallego, Jeffries, Garamendi, Jeffries. This is Bob Good. Look for Bob Garbarino. Good. Garbarino, McCarthy, Mike Garcia, McCarthy, Robert Garcia, Jeffries, Garcia of Illinois, Jeffries, Garcia of Texas. Jeffries, Jimenez, McCarthy, Golden of Maine, Jeffries, Goldman of New York, Goldman of New York, Gomez, Jeffries, Tony Gonzalez, McCarthy. Vicente Gonzalez, Jeffries. Good of Virginia, Jordan.
There we go. That's the number. That's number five. This is all McCarthy can afford. Gooden of Texas. To lose. McCarthy. And next up, we have Paul Gosar. 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 Gottheimer. Gosar Jeffries. didn't want to be the guy. Gosar didn't Granger. want to be the guy to sink him. McCarthy. Grays of Louisiana. McCarthy. Graves of Missouri. McCarthy. Green of Tennessee. Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Green of Texas. Jeffries. Green of Georgia. McCarthy. Griffith. McCarthy. Grijalva. Jeffries. Growthman. Now, McCarthy has lost five, McCarthy. which wouldn't be enough, Guest. but. If somebody votes present, for example, it lowers the threshold from 218 to 217. So there is still a possibility that McCarthy could win this ballot if he has no more defections. Guthrie. McCarthy. McCarthy. Hageman. McCarthy. Harder of California. Jeffries. Jeffries. Harris. Jordan. Jordan. Harshbarger, McCarthy, Hayes, Jeffries, oh, yeah. Hearn. He's at six. This thing's cooked. McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy will lose the twelfth ballot to become speaker. Of Louisiana. This thing is done. So he clawed back five Republicans. McCarthy. Uh, Bishop. Higgins of New York. Jeffries. Hill. McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah. Hi. So Kevin McCarthy will lose on the 12th Jeffries. ballot right now and we'll go to a 13th ballot. Henson. McCarthy. McCarthy. Horsford. Jeffries. Jeffries. Houchin. McCarthy. Houlihan. Jeffries. Hoyer. Jeffries. Hoyle of Oregon. Jeffries. Jeffries. Hudson. McCarthy. McCarthy. Huffman. Jeffries. Jeffries. Heisinga. McCarthy. Hunt. Hunt. Isa. McCarthy. Ivy. Jeffries. Jeffries. Jackson of Illinois. Jeffries. Jackson of North Carolina. Jeffries. Jackson of Texas. Jackson of Texas. <coughs> McCarthy. Jackson Lee. Jeffries. Jacobs. Jeffries. James. McCarthy. Jayapal. Jeffries. 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 Johnson of Georgia. 
Jeffries Johnson of Louisiana. McCarthy. Johnson of Ohio. McCarthy. McCarthy. Johnson of South Dakota. McCarthy. McCarthy. Jordan. McCarthy. Joyce of Ohio. McCarthy. Joyce of Pennsylvania. McCarthy. Kim Logger Dove. Jeffries. Captor. Jeffries. Kane of New Jersey. McCarthy. Keating. Jeffries. Kelly of Illinois. Jeffries. Kelly of Mississippi. McCarthy. Kelly of Pennsylvania. McCarthy. Kana. Jeffries. Kiggins of Virginia. McCarthy. Kildee. Jeffries. Kylie. McCarthy. Kilmer. Jeffries. Kim of California. McCarthy. Kim of New Jersey. Jeffries. Krishna Morthy. Jeffries. Custer. Jeffries. Kustoff. McCarthy. LaHood. McCarthy. Lalota. McCarthy. Lamalfa. McCarthy. Lamborn. McCarthy. Landsman. Jeffries. Langworthy. McCarthy. Larson of Washington. Jeffries. Larson of Connecticut. Jeffries. Latta. McCarthy. Laturner. McCarthy. Lawler. The Honorable Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Lee of California. Jeffries. Lee of Florida. McCarthy. Lee of Nevada. Jeffries. Lee of Pennsylvania. Jeffries. Ledger Fernandez. Ledger Fernandez. Lesko. McCarthy. Letlow. McCarthy. Levin. Jeffries. Lou. Jeffries. Lofgren. Jeffries. Luna will be Lauer next. Milk. McCarthy. Lucas. McCarthy. Lutkemeyer. I believe McCarthy. next is Luna. Keep an ear out for Luna. that Luna. Any negotiation in good faith that will outlive this entire conference? Kevin McCarthy. There it is. Another flip for Kevin McCarthy. That makes six flips for Kevin McCarthy, but he will not win this vote. It will go to a 13th ballot, but that's a flip for Kevin McCarthy. She does not seem happy. <laughs> Latrell McCarthy. Lynch. <coughs> Jeffries. Mace. Mace. McCarthy. Magaziner. Jeffries. 
Maliotakis. McCarthy. Mann. McCarthy. Manning. Jeffries. Massey. McCarthy. Mast. McCarthy. Matsui. Jeffries. McBath. Jeffries. McCarthy. McCarthy. Big applause for the guy who's managed to lose 12 straight speaker elections despite being in the majority. Pretty exciting stuff. McCall. McCarthy. McLean. McCarthy. McClintock. McCarthy. McCollum. Jeffries. McCormick, McCarthy, McGarvey, McGarvey, Jeffries, McGovern, Jeffries, McHenry, McCarthy, Meeks, Jeffries, Menendez, Jeffries, Meng, Jeffries, Muser, McCarthy, Mfume, Jeffries, Miller of Illinois, So that's the seventh flip. Mary Miller's the seventh flip in McCarthy's favor. Still will not win this ballot. Miller of West Virginia. McCarthy. Miller Meeks. McCarthy. Mills. McCarthy. Molinero. McCarthy. Molinar. McCarthy. Mooney. McCarthy. Moore of Alabama. McCarthy. Moore of Utah. McCarthy. Moore of Wisconsin. Jeffries. Moran. McCarthy. Morelli. Jeffries. Moskowitz. Jeffries. Moulton. Jeffries. Mervan. Jeffries. Mullen. Jeffries. Murphy. Murphy. McCarthy. Nadler. Jeffries. Napolitano. Jeffries. Neil. Jeffries. Nagus. Jeffries. Nails. McCarthy. Newhouse. McCarthy. Nickel. Jeffries. Norcross. Jeffries. Norman. There's another one from McCarthy that's eight. <laughs> These guys all look miserable the second they have to cast their ballots for McCarthy. This is the eighth flip in McCarthy's favor. He still will not win this ballot. McCarthy. <laughs> Obernolte, McCarthy, Ocasio-Cortez, Jeffries, Ogles, 
Ogles. Omar. Jeffries. Owens. McCarthy. Pallone. Jeffries. Palmer. McCarthy. Panetta. Jeffries. Pappas. Jeffries. Pasquale. Jeffries. Payne. Payne. Pelosi. Jeffries. Peltola. Jeffries. Pence. McCarthy. Perez. Jeffries. Perry. McCarthy. There's another flip. Scott Perry is the ninth flip, which has cut Kevin McCarthy's deficit in half. Kevin McCarthy had lost 21 yesterday. He's down, uh, he's got clawed back nine of those people with Scott Perry. Peters. Jeffries. Pedersen. Jeffries. Scott Perry, by the way, is the chair Luger. of the House Freedom Caucus, so this is a big vote for Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy to get him. Phillips. Jeffries. Pingree. Jeffries. Pocan. Jeffries. Porter. Jeffries. Posey. McCarthy. Presley. Presley. Quigley. Jeffries. Ramirez. Jeffries. Raskin. Jeffries. Reschenthaler. McCarthy. Rogers of Washington. McCarthy. Rogers of Alabama. McCarthy. 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 Rogers of Kentucky. Rogers of Kentucky. McCarthy. Rose. McCarthy. Rosendale. Kevin. Hearn. Hearn. <laughs> so that's another defection from Kevin McCarthy that puts us at number seven. What a clown. This this whole conference is a bunch of Ross. clowns. Jeffries. Rouser. McCarthy. Roy. Kevin McCarthy. That's another big holdout for Kevin McCarthy. That means he's flipped 10 so far. He had lost 21 yesterday. He's clawed back 10 Republicans. We still have three of them to go. We haven't heard from Paul Gosar. We haven't heard from, I believe his name Lees. is Ogles. Jeffries. Rupersberger. Jeffries. Rutherford. McCarthy. Ryan. Jeffries. Salazar. Salazar. Salinas. Jeffries. Sanchez. Sanchez. Santos. McCarthy. Sarbanes. Jeffries. Scalise. McCarthy. Scanlon. 
Jeffries. Schakowsky. Jeffries. Schiff. Jeffries. Schneider. Jeffries. Skolton. Jeffries. Schreier. Jeffries. Schweigert. McCarthy. Next one to look out for is Self. Austin Scott. McCarthy. David Scott. Jeffries. Scott of Virginia. Jeffries. Self. We are making progress. McCarthy. McCarthy. There's another flip. That's 11 flips for Kevin McCarthy. Still will not win this ballot, and he's got a, a, a tough road to go with people like Matt Gates, who seems uh, unwinnable. But that's 11 flips Sessions. for McCarthy. McCarthy. Sewell. Jeffries. Sherman. Jeffries. Cheryl. Jeffries. Simpson. McCarthy. Slotkin. The next Jeffries. one will be Victoria Spark. Smith of Missouri. Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Smith of Nebraska. Sparts voted present, so let's see what she does here. Smith of New Jersey. McCarthy. McCarthy. Smith of Washington. Jeffries. Jeffries. Smucker. She should be next. McCarthy. Victoria Sparts. Sorensen. Jeffries. Soto. Jeffries. Spanberger. Jeffries. Sparts. McCarthy. That's another win for Kevin. So that's the 12th Republican that McCarthy has clawed back. Still does not have the votes to become speaker. He will lose this ballot. Stansbury. Jeffries. Stanton. Jeffries. Stauber. McCarthy. Steele. McCarthy. Stefanik, McCarthy. Style, McCarthy. Stuby, McCarthy. Stevens, Jeffries. Stewart. So this should be it. We should know how everybody else is going to vote. At the end of this round, they'll go back and call for people who haven't who haven't yet voted, Strong. who missed their vote. And included in those will McCarthy. be two other McCarthy holdouts. That's Paul Stop Gosar that. and Ogles. Jeffries. So we'll wait and see what they do. But right now, um, McCarthy has been able Jeffries. to flip 12, and he still lost seven. Jeffries. Tenney. McCarthy. Tanadar. Jeffries. Thompson of, Thompson of California. Jeffries. Thompson of Mississippi. Yeah. Jeffries. Thompson of Pennsylvania. Yeah, McCarthy. McCarthy. Tiffany. Yeah, McCarthy. McCarthy. Timmons. McCarthy. McCarthy. Titus. Yeah, Jeffries. Tlaib. Yeah. Jeffries. Takuda. Yeah, Jeffries. Tonko, Jeffries. Torres of California, Jeffries. Torres of New York, Jeffries. Trahan, Jeffries. Trone, Trone. Turner. McCarthy. Underwood. Jeffries. Valadeo. McCarthy. Van Drew. McCarthy. Van Dyne. McCarthy. 
Van Orden. Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Vargas. Jeffries. Vasquez. Jeffries. VC. Jeffries. Velasquez. Jeffries. Wagner. McCarthy. Wahlberg. McCarthy. Waltz. McCarthy. Wasserman Schultz. Jeffries. Waters. Jeffries. Watson Coleman. Jeffries. Weber of okay, Texas. Okay, we're nearing the end. McCarthy. Nearing the end, they'll go back Webster, and get votes from Paul Gosar and Ogles. And so we'll McCarthy. see if McCarthy was able to flip either one of those. Winstrup. He's at, he's at 12 right McCarthy. now. Westerman. McCarthy. Wexton. Jeffries. Wild. Jeffries. Williams of Georgia. Jeffries. Williams of New York. McCarthy. Williams of Texas. McCarthy. Wilson of Florida. Jeffries. Wilson of South Carolina. McCarthy. Whitman. McCarthy. Womack. McCarthy. Yakum. McCarthy. Zinke. McCarthy. The reading clerk will now call the names of the members elect who did not answer the first call of the roll. Look for Gosar and Ogles. Those are the two other non McCarthy voters in previous rounds. Alford. Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Buck. Buck. Buck didn't vote yesterday either. Burchett. Madam Clerk, based on the fact no one cheers when I speak, I've never been asked to give a nomination speech, but I'm not, I'm not there about it. It's kind of funny. Kassar. Jeffries. <laughs> Diaz Ballart. McCarthy. Goldman of New York. Jeffries. Yeah, look for Gosar here. Uh, Gosar. Gosar. McCarthy. McCarthy. That's another flip for Kevin McCarthy. That's 13. <laughs> Gosar flips to McCarthy. That makes 13. Still not enough. Hunt. Hunt. Okay. Ledger Fernandez. Jeffries. Ogles. On behalf of my colleagues, I've been Negotiating in good faith as an act of good faith, my colleagues. McCarthy. 
So there it is. McCarthy will flip 14 of the 21 defections. That leaves him with seven no votes. He can afford to lose, I believe, four or five. So he will lose this round. We'll see what happens. It's going to be more difficult for those holdouts to, to continue holding out. But we'll see what happens. Jeffries. Some of them seem really dug in. Presley. Jeffries. Salazar. McCarthy. Sanchez. Jeffries. Trone. Trone. If there are any members elect who did not answer the call of the roll, they may come to the well and vote at this time. So we're waiting on these final votes. If there are any, let me see if I can count them up. We may be waiting for two more votes. I believe Ken Buck and somebody else. After the 12th round of voting for House Speaker, the unofficial tally, Kevin McCarthy with 214 votes, Hakeem Jeffries with 211, seven Republicans choosing not to vote for Kevin McCarthy. A very distinct shift from the 11th vote where it ended last night. This is Sarah Ferris from uh, her tweet, Capitol Hill reporter, saying it's the first concrete sign of movement for McCarthy in days. This has been the McCarthy team's biggest goal, any kind of momentum to prevent further bleeding of Republican sources, saying that they still believe it's impossible to get all the votes today. Uh, they would still need uh, several more, quote, never Kevin votes. Remember, the magic number is 218. Uh, the a reminder, yesterday, this is where things stood. Kevin McCarthy with 200 votes. He picked up 14 votes in that 12th round of voting. Uh, here's who he picked up. Dan Bishop of North Carolina, Josh Breachin of Oklahoma, Michael Cloud of Texas, Andrew Clyde of Georgia, Byron Donalds of Florida, Anna Paulina Luna of Florida, Mary Miller of Illinois, Ralph Norman of South Carolina, Scout, Scott Perry of Pennsylvania, Chip Roy of Texas, Keith Self of Texas, Paul Gosar of Arizona, Andy Ogles of Tennessee, and Victoria Sparts of Indiana shifted her vote from present in the last round of voting to a vote actively for Kevin McCarthy. That's the 14 votes that Kevin McCarthy picked up since the 11th round. Seven Republicans still holding out against Kevin McCarthy, and Kevin McCarthy can only lose four and still become Speaker of the House. Andy Biggs of Arizona continuing to vote against Kevin McCarthy. Lauren Boebert of Colorado also voting for another candidate. Eli Crane of Arizona joining Lauren Boebert in voting for Kevin Hearn. Matt Gates of Florida voting for Jim Jordan. Bob Good of Virginia voting for Jim Jordan. 
Andy Harris of Maryland voting for Jim Jordan, Matt Rosendale of Montana, Montana voting for Kevin Hearn. A couple of the members who shifted their vote in that round of voting, tweeting out statements. Here's two of them. Scott Perry of Pennsylvania, who came over to the McCarthy side in that round, saying at 1.05 p.m. Eastern via Twitter, we're at a turning point. I've negotiated in good faith with one purpose, to restore the People's House back to its rightful owners. The framework for an agreement is in place. So in good faith, I voted to restore the People's House by voting for GOP leader McCarthy. And uh, this via Olivia Beavers of Politico uh, tweeting out Keith Self's statement, Keith Self of Texas. This is part of what the congressman-elect had to say. My vote today was to show support for significant rule changes to transform the House from being dysfunctional to functional. I believe we are on the precipice of transferring significant power from leadership to individual members and the American people. It has become clear to me, he said in his statement, that a couple of individuals are simply obstructionists, more interested in self-promotion than restoring the republic. I ran for Congress. It's funny to watch Republicans figure out who Republicans are in real time. District of Texas, I appreciate all of the input that has been offered over the past few days, and I am taking it into consideration as I continue to ne negotiate in good faith on your behalf. Sahil Kapoor of NBC News taking us inside the talks via his Twitter feed. The Freedom Caucus wants three seats on the Rules Committee, which controls what bills go to the floor. The current negotiations involve Kevin McCarthy picking one, and they present a list, and he picks two more from that list. Uh, that's according to lawmakers talking to Sahil Kapoor. That's the latest. We're at the end of the 12th round. The unofficial tally, again, Kevin McCarthy picking up 14 votes. 214 now, Hakeem Jeffries at 211, seven Republicans still voting for another. So this is where we're at right now. Uh, again, Kevin McCarthy will lose this 12th ballot. Uh, he may, if he's able to pull any of these Republicans, claw any of these other Republicans back, he can afford to lose four. Right now he's at seven. A number of these Republicans have really staked, uh, planted their flag in the never McCarthy camp. So if he's able... To pull any of them back, he's gonna well that he's gonna need to if he wants to become speaker. But it's gonna be increasingly difficult with people like Matt Gates, whose entire persona is predicated on him uh, keeping true to his like firebrand image that he's created for himself. So uh, we'll keep an eye and see what's gonna happen in this upcoming 13th vote, and uh, if there are gonna be any changes, he's obviously gonna need to do a little bit more negotiating if he's able to bring back any of these Republican holdouts. Um, with that said, I'm going to continue live streaming this throughout uh, throughout the entire process. So if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. It's the best way to support what I do, and that will ensure that whether it, if we don't finish today, that you'll be able to watch these live streams as I continue to broadcast them until we finally do manage to get a speaker, uh, since we are four days and 12 votes in for the simplest task of simply being able to find somebody to lead the caucus that currently has the majority in the House. So hit the subscribe button. I also do breaking news videos on a daily basis and interviews with everyone from Joe Biden to Jen Psaki, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Jamie Raskin, and, uh, and on and on. So, um, so with that said, we'll wait for the clerk to read the final tally and see if there's anybody else that's going to um, that's going to vote who hasn't voted yet and that includes someone like ken buck for example but other than that we'll wait for the clerk to read the final tally and then we will likely hear uh, uh somebody stand up and nominate kevin mccarthy again so i guess what we're waiting to see now is if there's any negotiation to bring back three out of those seven holdouts uh, and those holdouts include uh, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, um, uh, uh, Crane, Bob Good, Harris, uh, Matt Rosendale, and Andy Biggs. So we'll see if they can do anything to claw back those Republican members. But we're headed to a 13th ballot now. The last time that we've needed to go this far, even past nine ballots, uh, was in the uh, mid to late 1800s. So we are witnessing a once in a more than a century humiliation for the GOP as, uh, as their dysfunction is put on full display and they remain incapable of choosing a leader from among their conference.
What's also going to make this difficult is you have someone like Lauren Boebert, who's been making the rounds on cable TV, basically, again, planting her flag in the Never McCarthy camp. And for these people, it's not about governing, it's not about a policy, it's about their persona, it's about character. And so, and so if they plant their flag in the Never McCarthy camp, and because all they care about is their image and, and how they look to the outside world, then that's even more incentive for them not to defect back to McCarthy because then they're just going to lose the one thing that they have going for them. Again, this is not about governing principles. It's not about policy. It's just about, it's just about them and their image. And so if that's all they've got and they stand to lose that by looking, like, by looking weak in that respect, then, then they lose everything they have. Um, so it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be an, a, a really uphill battle for someone like Kevin McCarthy to bring over those people like Lauren Boebert, Andy Biggs, and Matt Gates. So we'll see what he does and what he has to promise them. Or he just recognizes that, you know, for certain people for whom their image is the number one thing far and away, and they are such, uh, they are so, um, they are so present in the media, maybe he just ignores them and just focuses on the lower hanging fruit. And I know, you know, we're 12 votes in now, so I wouldn't necessarily consider anybody an easy get, but there are likely easier gets than someone like Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert. In the 12th round of voting, picking up a significant number of votes in that round, a 14 vote shift from how it ended last night. Uh, and the magic number today is 217. That's how many votes Kevin McCarthy would need to get to get the speakership. There are 432 members voting today. Half of that plus one gets to 200 and 17, uh, and it has to be uh, the majority of those voting for an official candidate, and uh, every member who voted voted for a candidate, nobody voting present that round. Again, 14 members shifting their votes from not McCarthy to McCarthy, still seven holdouts. The math then is that Kevin McCarthy would need to pick off three of those holdouts to achieve the speakership. We're showing you live shots, of the House floor as we await the official numbers from the clerk live coverage here on C-SPAN. So momentarily, we should have those final numbers from the clerk, and then pretty quickly thereafter, someone will stand up and nominate Kevin McCarthy again, and uh, we'll see if we can do lucky 13 this time. Again, we're four days in, 12 ballots in, on to a 13th, and uh, we'll see if, if, uh, if Kevin McCarthy is able to pull it out. He was already able to bring over 14 defectors, but he's got these final seven, and he can afford to lose four of them. So we'll see what happens, uh, what he has to promise those members um, in, able, in order to be able to bring them over. My guess is uh, he'll offer each of them at least two kicks in the groin. That might be enough to, to garner their support, but we'll see. I think it's telling, too, that you have... Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert, who are not in some closed-door meeting right now negotiating with someone like Tom Emmer on Kevin McCarthy's behalf or Kevin McCarthy himself. These people seem to be stalwart holdouts, and uh, it doesn't look like McCarthy is going to be able to get their support. So I would look for other members uh, in terms of being able uh, to seem more flippable for Kevin McCarthy. So... For those of you just joining, we just wrapped up the, the 12th ballot. Kevin McCarthy has failed to secure enough votes for a speaker. He lost seven Republicans. He can afford to lose four. Uh, he did 
claw back 14 Republicans who had defected in previous votes. So moving in the right direction for Kevin McCarthy, but it's going to become increasingly more difficult to bring back these other Republican defectors, uh, given how entrenched in their position they are, and that they basically make up the entirety of the opposition right now. And so because these people are really focused on their image and and I mean, it's the Matt Gates and Lauren Boberts of the party. They're going to have uh, a pretty tough time bringing those people out uh, back to the Republican side, back to the Kevin McCarthy side. So with that said, we will head to a 13th ballot. We're waiting right now on the clerk to report the final tally. After that, someone will stand up, nominate Kevin McCarthy, nominate Hakeem Jeffries, and then we'll see what happens in terms of what Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert do. Matt Gates in this previous round nominated Jim Jordan. Uh, Lauren Boebert in this previous round. I believe nominated Kevin Hearn, but I'm not positive. Don't quote me on that one. Again, for those just joining, also, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, I'll be following along with this coverage uh, until we finally manage to elect a speaker. So uh, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Best way to support my work, and you can also follow along with uh, one to two videos a day, usually on the biggest breaking news story or an interview. And I would appreciate it, so thank you. Again, we're moments away from the clerk reading the final tally here, so stick around and, uh, and then vote number 13th will be big. That will be big because that will be the first vote after McCarthy was able to claw back all of those defectors. So we'll see whether the Lauren Boberts, Matt Gaetzes, Andy Biggs are able to, to kind of hold their opposition coalition together or if, uh, if you'll start to see people fall off. And if you see more people fall off and go toward McCarthy, then I think it's pretty much the end of, uh, of you know, these holdouts to McCarthy. And we would likely see a McCarthy speakership uh, possibly today. But this next vote is going to be pretty telling here. So definitely stick around because uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next. As we await the official vote count, some history via Greg Giro of Bloomberg, uh, noting that this is likely to go to a 13th round of voting with Kevin McCarthy falling short of the 217 votes that he needed in that round. Only four speaker elections in history required more than 12 rounds of voting. Live coverage as we await the official tally from the clerk here on C-SPAN. Again, for those just joining in right now, we are awaiting the final tally for the 12th vote, but Kevin McCarthy will lose that vote and will head to a 13th. Uh, we are still waiting to see what happens with seven holdouts. That's Andy Biggs, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, uh, Crane, Good, Harris, and Matt Rosendale. 
So we'll see if uh, Kevin McCarthy is able to claw back three of those. He can only afford to lose four Republicans. It's likely going to be Matt Gates, Lauren Boebert, uh, at least, probably Andy Biggs, uh, who remain obstinate in their opposition to him. So I would imagine that, uh, that the McCarthy allies right now are, are working pretty hard on Crane, Good, Harris, or Rosendale. So we'll see what happens in terms of, uh, in terms of a 13th ballot here. Uh, that should happen momentarily. We should hear from the clerk uh, who will bang the gavel and, and, uh, and read that final tally momentarily. And then the 13th ballot will be telling. We may see a final vote right here on number 13th. So stick around because this might be the end of what has turned into a four-day process, a, a historic, more than once in a century uh, occurrence here. You know, people have asked too, and I covered this in a video that I did on my channel yesterday. People have asked too, like, why, why would the Republicans like Lauren Boebert, like Matt Gates, come out and do this? Don't they have a vested interest in seeming united and unified? And the answer is no. I think that actually it's in their political interest to sow this kind of dysfunction because a lot of what these Republicans, but especially far-right Republicans, rely on is trying to promote this idea that government can't work for people. You have Democrats who think that government is the solution. You have Republicans who think that government is the problem. And that's a, a reductive version of it. But uh, if, your, if your ideology, if your political ideology is that government can't work for people, is that government is broken and that we have to shrink it, you have a vested interest in breaking it. And then you uh, have someone like Lauren Boebert or Matt Gates break government, do what you can to sow that kind of dysfunction, and then go back to your constituents, go back to your base, who may be low information voters, who may not be paying attention to this stuff, and say, look, we told you, government can't work, it's broken, you have to continue to shrink government, I'm the person to do that. But what they don't tell those people is that they themselves are the ones who broke it. So you have Gates and Boebert who are breaking it, and then immediately turning, turning around, going to their constituents and saying, see? This thing can't work. Look at all this dysfunction. Washington is broken. You need small government now. Don't listen to those Democrats who say the government is the, is the solution. Listen to me who says the government is the problem. At, while at the same time not, uh, not revealing the second half of that, which is that they themselves are the ones who actually broke it. So they have a vested interest in making sure that they create as much mayhem and chaos and dysfunction as possible. Because that's aligned with their whole political ideology. It helps them. This is them looking out for their own political interests. When on the flip side, if you actually allow people to see what government can do when you have people in power who believe in government, who believe that government can help people, who believe that government can help lower prices and protect workers and protect the climate and on and on, uh, then you have, you know, a demo then you have, if you look at our democratic majority in the last two years and what they were able to, able to accomplish with the same uh, margin, by the way, that we're seeing right now with the Republican conference. They can't even manage to get themselves together to vote in a speaker. But you have bills that, uh, that we got over the last two years, like the American Rescue Plan, like the first gun safety bill in 30 years, like the CHIPS Act, which uh, led to hundreds of billions of dollars in investments and tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of jobs because of those investments. You have the Inflation Reduction Act, which uh, allocated record funding to fight climate change and allowed the government to negotiate lower drug prices and capped out-of-pocket costs for seniors at 2000 bucks a year, capped insulin costs 35 bucks a month for Medicare recipients. You have uh, the PACT Act, which gave health care to sick veterans. So on and on, you have the Infrastructure Act that they're, that they're dealing with right now in terms of uh, finally spending that money that was allocated. So if you look at what people do uh, once they're in power, who believe in the power of government, who believe that government can help people, who believe that government can be used uh, uh, to, to pass 
gun safety legislation to keep people to keep more people alive to uh, combat climate change to do all of that stuff then you recognize like the then you see the contrast right there in you know in people who believe that government is can be used as a solution versus people who think that government's a problem and I think I think just having those two examples right out in front of you you see which one helps people more is it this dysfunction that is completely unnecessary these are completely unforced errors being carried out by the Republican Party versus a Repub uh, versus a Democratic Party who used what power they were given over the last two years to actually pass legislation that's going to help regular people. And I think that Republicans have a vested interest in making sure people like Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates have a vested interest in making sure that their own constituents don't eventually recognize that government can be used to help people because then their whole political ideology, their whole mantra, their whole edict falls apart. And so they do whatever they can to immediately break it again. Because if government isn't broken by their own doing, but instead if it's used to help people, if it's used to create rural broadband, if it's used to pass gun safety laws that 90% of the country supports, if it's used to combat climate change that'll help uh, people in red states and blue states alike, then people will start to realize that like, why am I voting for Republicans when all they do is, is, is destroy the very system of government that they're supposed to uphold? So... That's why they're doing what they're doing. They have a political incentive to do this. They're not doing it uh, for, for some selfless reason, despite what they may claim. They're doing it for themselves. This aligns perfectly with their own political ideology. So let's not pretend for a second that Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert aren't looking out for themselves. Because if their ideology is that government is too dysfunctional to work, then they have a vested interest in making sure that government is too dysfunctional to work. What I hope that people realize, though, is that Based on what we just saw these last two years, government can be a tool for good, and it's helped a ton of people, and it will keep health care costs low for people. It will stop school shootings, hopefully. It will combat climate change by virtue of uh, allocating funding. It'll fix our roads and bridges. It'll create rural broadband for people in those red counties who usually don't vote for Democrats. Uh, we just had Biden with McConnell yesterday uh, announcing, uh, announcing funding for a bridge in Kentucky. How many of those people that were there do you think voted for Joe Biden? This, these policies will help people regardless of their political affiliation. Um, and so I think it's important that people recognize that difference, recognize the asymmetry there, and also recognize that Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert aren't doing this for anybody else but themselves. They know exactly what they're doing. They aren't making themselves pariahs in the Republican Party. They're helping themselves by perpetuating the ideology that they run on. So I think it's important to recognize those things. So we're waiting right now for the clerk to read that final tally, and then we'll see what happens uh, in this next round. This could be it. Round number 13 could be lucky, lucky 13 for Kevin McCarthy. In the meantime, if you're following along and appreciate the coverage of the commentary, um, please consider subscribing to this channel. That's the best way to support what I do, and I would really appreciate it. Just hit the subscribe button right here on the screen. As we wait to see whether there will be a 13th round of voting for speaker, some news on what might happen if there is. Olivia Beavers of Politico 
reporting via Twitter that it would be James Comer of Kentucky who would nominate Kevin McCarthy as speaker in the next round. James Comer, who is set to be the chairman of the Oversight Committee, the lead investigative committee on Capitol Hill. Uh, and uh, again, we'll see if uh, there is a 13th round of voting, the 12th round inconclusive but significant movement towards Kevin McCarthy in that round. 14 votes moving in his favor. We're waiting, though, for the official tally from the clerk. You're watching live coverage on C-SPAN. We have some reporting from Manu Raju from CNN. I want to put that on. You'll hear his audio here in just a second. And also, one very important thing he said that was part of the deal is dealing with raising the national debt limit. He just told a group of us that they addressed this issue. This is going to be a major, major a flashpoint in the new Congress. They have to avoid a debt default, and that's going to happen sometime this year, maybe in the middle of part of this year. He said there's some agreement on how to deal with that. One thing he said is they would not agree to a clean debt ceiling increase, meaning they need some conditions tied to avoid a national debt default, which has never happened in American history. So that is going to be a huge fight going forward. But it, from what Scott Perry just told a group of us, that was part of this deal that has not yet been publicly released, but that apparently was reached between a handful of these holdouts and Kevin McCarthy. So this deal, not just process, giving them more leverage over the speaker, that being able to oust the sitting speaker with one individual doing that, give, having more members of those hard right freedom caucus on some of the key committees, but policy implications as well in dealing with the national debt ceiling. Big significant issue going forward. But for McCarthy right now on the floor, they're counting the votes. Right now, they're, the, 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 ta the clerks are making... Okay. In other words... Basically, Kevin McCarthy agreed to demands by the Freedom Caucus to hold uh, uh, the, the national debt ceiling, the debt ceiling um, and, and the possibility of a debt default, a hostage. So that would have huge implications for the national economy. And, uh, and those, the, the keys to that car were just handed to the House Freedom Caucus. So um, to make the final tally. Not great news in terms of what Kevin McCarthy has had to give up in his desperation to become speaker right now and the extent to which these far-right uh, Freedom Caucus members are, uh, are going to have power in this Congress here. So, uh, And uh, Democrats saying this will bring the number needed to win uh, up by one for Kevin McCarthy. Uh, the number needed to win officially 217 at this point. We'll see if David Trone does, in fact, vote in the next round or if there is in fact a 13th round of voting uh, it all will happen after the house clerk makes the 12th round tally official and we'll see uh, what republicans decide to do there could be a motion for adjournment there could be a push for a 13th round live coverage on c-span
Okay, here we go. We should expect the speaker, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the clerk to read the tally now, and then we'll have another nomination for Kevin McCarthy, and we'll go into vote number 13. The tellers agree in their tallies that the total number of votes cast is 431, of which the Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the State of California has received 213. Hakeem Jeffries of the state of New York has received 211. <laughs> the Honorable Jim Jordan of the state of Ohio has received four. The Honorable Kevin Hearn of the state of Oklahoma has received three. Yikes, not a single clap. No member elect having received a majority of the votes cast, the speaker has not been elected. For what purpose does the gentleman from Kentucky rise? I rise on behalf of the Republican Party to nominate Kevin McCarthy for speaker of the 118th Congress. The gentleman is recognized. For the past two years, one party Democrat rule has resulted in multiple crises that are harming Americans without any oversight or accountability from this body. Americans are facing historic inflation, skyrocketing energy costs, the worst border crisis in American history, and surging fentanyl overdoses. One of the reasons... It's just the same speech recycled 13 times now. There's no sense of urgency from this White House or the bureaucrats that populate this town to move. Now, I want to talk about that. Oversight of our tax dollars, that's our responsibility. We've all heard reports of hundreds of millions of dollars of potential waste and fraud in the unemployment insurance programs in all 50 states. We've all heard reports of misuse of hundreds of millions of dollars of the stimulus money, of PPP loan funds. But yet, there has not been a single hearing in the House Oversight Committee about this. The border crisis. We've made several trips on this side of the aisle to the border. We've listened to the Border Patrol agents. Their message is loud and clear. Under President Biden, the Border Patrol has become the welcoming committee. They're begging for help to do their job. Law enforcement officers in all 50 states are begging Congress to force this administration to secure the border to do something about the fentanyl crisis that plagues every community in every state in our great nation. <laughs> Americans watched in disarray at the debacle in Afghanistan, and Americans were left with many questions. How much equipment was left behind for the Taliban? How many Americans were left behind? The origination of COVID-19. We all know someone personally who lost their life during COVID-19. They deserve answers to what really happened in that lab in Wuhan, China.
These guys would push against even wearing masks, and now they're pretending to care about the lives lost to COVID-19. The public school system can testify that our kids have lost a year of their education because of the forced virtual learning that so many of our schools uh, put our children through during the COVID pandemic. Congress ran the debt up at least $3 trillion in the name of COVID-19. Yet, as I mentioned earlier, there has not been a single hearing in the Oversight Committee. The CARES Act, which was $1.9 trillion, was passed by Republicans under Trump. Not a single hearing. I wouldn't be surprised if this guy and himself voted for it. Despite what Dr. Fauci said, American tax dollars were sent through EcoHealth Alliance to the Wuhan lab in China for gain-of-function research. But yet Dr. Fauci hasn't come before Congress in the House of Representatives. The American people deserve answers on COVID-19, and Speaker Kevin McCarthy has given the Republican majority the tools necessary to make that possible. The Democrats have spent the past six years investigating a president for potential wrongdoing in Ukraine and Russia. Now, let me say this loud and clear. The Republicans will also investigate a president for potential wrongdoing in Ukraine and Russia, as well as China. The American people have a lot of questions for Dr. Fauci. Christopher Ray, Merrick Garland, Secretary Mayorkas. We can't have those questions. We can't ask those questions until we get organized and elect our speaker. The role of the Oversight Committee under Speaker Pelosi was a full-time committee to harass the previous president, a committee to advocate for wage social issues, which the Oversight Committee had absolutely no jurisdiction and a committee totally uninterested in the American taxpayer. In a Republican majority under Speaker Kevin McCarthy and many of my friends embedded in these negotiations, the House Oversight Committee with strong members, strong members like Byron Donalds and Andy Biggs and Jim Jordan will return to its original mission of identifying waste, fraud, abuse, and mismanagement in the federal government and holding unelected bureaucrats accountable. Yay. In a Republican majority, under Speaker Kevin McCarthy, the forgotten working men and women's voices will finally be heard and represented. And in a Republican majority under Speaker Kevin McCarthy, this broken Congress will finally be fixed and we will return to regular order and we will drag those senators kicking and streaming along with us every step of the way. We will return to regular order. We will get the backs of the American taxpayers. This is the people's house. Let's get to work. Madam Clerk, I'm proud to nominate Kevin McCarthy to be the next Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, and I yield back. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Texas rise? Madam Clerk, I rise to nominate a great leader, a unifier, not a divider, Hakeem Jeffries for Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. The gentlewoman is recognized. We are on day four the 13th vote, and House Democrats continue to stand united with Hakeem Jeffries, with him and for him, because he is a uniter, not a divider, and a positive force of nature. Two days ago, during the fourth, fifth, maybe the sixth roll call, a nominator claimed this process should not be considered dysfunction. 
Madam Clerk, their process didn't begin this week. They've had months to figure this out. And Americans should have profound concerns about what this portends. As we gather here in this chamber on this solemn day, the second anniversary of January 6th, when members of law enforcement were under siege, when there was an attempted coup, an insurrection that will live in infamy, what we lived through was an assault on our republic and on our democracy from within. On that day, when my colleagues and I were trapped in this gallery, the terrorists who assaulted our police officers could be heard banging on these doors, breaking these windows, and they were here to prevent the certification of a free and fair election. I shudder to think what a Republican majority's inability to govern would have meant on that day and what it could mean in the future for those of us who believe in defending our democracy abroad and now more than ever here at home. On this painful anniversary, thankfully, the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries made sure that we came together to mark the moment, to honor our law enforcement, recognize the lives lost as a result of that day, honor the families and the survivors and to ensure that we recommit to our republic and our democracy. That is the kind of speaker that our nation needs. We are now four days into what should be the 118th Congress, and the House of Representatives has no committees, no rules, no classified briefings, no members who have taken their oaths to serve our country. There are no debates happening on this floor about addressing the challenges we face at home or around the globe. No votes on legislation to tackle the challenges facing the American people. Madam Clerk, they told the American people they wanted to win the majority to fight inflation. The only thing they're fighting is each other. These four days have tested House Republicans' ability to govern, and they have failed. With Hakeem Jeffries as our speaker, Congress can continue to deliver common sense, bipartisan solutions for the American people. Instead, what we've seen unfold before our very eyes is exactly what's in store for the country over the next two years under Republican control. And this should be deeply concerning to the American people who expect us to do our jobs and fulfill even the most fundamental functions of this institution, like voting on the debt ceiling to fund expenditures we've already made. What if this happens then? What if we default on our debts because of the Republican majority's inability to govern? What impact will that have on our economy or on the global economy? And in less than nine months, in September, we have a vote to fund the government, to pay for our military, Social Security, Medicare, and other obligations. What happens on September 30th when government funding runs out and they're in charge? With Hakeem Jeffries as our speaker, we can continue to advance an agenda that puts people over politics, just as we did in the 117th Congress with a majority as slim as theirs. Es un gran honor nominar a mi amigo. Madam Clerk, as co-chair of the House Democratic Policy and Communications Committee, and in accordance with the vote of the House Democratic Caucus, I'm honored to present for election to the Office of Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 118th Congress, the name of a man of integrity and intellect, who is bold and brilliant, and most importantly, a man who leads with love, the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries, representative from the state of New York.
The reading clerk will call the roll. Adams. Jeffries. Adderholt. Adderholt. Aguilar. Jeffries. Allford. Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Allen. McCarthy. McCarthy. Allred. Jeffries. Amaday. Amaday. Armstrong. McCarthy. Arrington. Arrington. Auchincloss. Jeffries. Babin. McCarthy. Bacon. McCarthy. Baird. So pretty notable that they didn't nominate someone else. Balderson. Look for Biggs first. Balderson. Ballant. Biggs and Bobert Jeffries. are the names to look out for. Banks. McCarthy. Barr. McCarthy. Barrigan. Jeffries. Bean of Florida. Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Beatty. Jeffries. Bentz. McCarthy. Barra. Jeffries. Bergman. McCarthy. Byer. Jeffries. Bice. McCarthy. Here we go. Biggs. Jordan. Jim Jordan. All right, so that's one defection. He can he can have four. Villarapas. Villarapas. The next name to McCarthy. look out for is going to be Lauren Bobert. Bishop of Georgia. Jeffries. Jeffries. Bishop of North Carolina. McCarthy. Blumenauer, Jeffries, Blunt Rochester, Jeffries, Bobert, Jordan. That's two defections for Kevin McCarthy. Remember, he can afford four. Bonamici, Jeffries, Bost, McCarthy. Bowman, Jeffries, Boyle of Pennsylvania, Jeffries, Burkeen, McCarthy, Brown, Jeffries, Brownlee, Jeffries, Buchanan, McCarthy, Buck, Buck, Bouchon, McCarthy, Bazinski, Jeffries, Burchett, McCarthy, Burgess, McCarthy, Burleson, McCarthy, Bush, Jeffries, Calvert, McCarthy, Kamek, McCarthy, Caraveo, Jeffries, Carbajal, Jeffries, Cardenas, Jeffries, K. 
Carrie. McCarthy. Carl. McCarthy. Carson. Jeffries. Carter of Georgia. McCarthy. Carter of Louisiana. Jeffries. Carter of Texas. McCarthy. Cartwright. The next name to look out for is going to be Crane to see if uh, McCarthy can claw back cl Crane. Case. Jeffries. Caston. Jeffries. Castor of Florida. Jeffries. Castro of Texas. Jeffries. Chavez de Rima. McCarthy. Sherfalis McCormick. Jeffries. Chu. Jeffries. Cicilline. Jeffries. Cisco Mani. McCarthy. Clark of Massachusetts. Jeffries. Clark of New York. Jeffries. Cleaver. Jeffries. Klein. Klein. Cloud. McCarthy. Clyburn. Jeffries. Clyde. McCarthy. Cohen. Jeffries. Jeffries. Cole. McCarthy. Collins. McCarthy. Comer. McCarthy. Connolly. Jeffries. Correa. Correa. Costa. Jeffries. Courtney. Jeffries. Craig. Look out for Jeffries. Crane. Crane. Jordan. That's another defection for Kevin McCarthy. Crawford. So, so far those three Crawford. holdouts, Andy Biggs, Lauren Boebert, and Crane Crenshaw. have all continued to be defections McCarthy. for Kevin McCarthy. He can afford one more. Crockett. Jeffries. Crow. Jeffries. Jeffries. The next names to look out for are Matt Gates and Bob Good. Jeffries. So nothing until the G's. Curtis. McCarthy. Davids of Kansas. Jeffries. Davidson. McCarthy. Davis of Illinois. Jeffries. Davis of North Carolina. Jeffries. Dean of Pennsylvania. Jeffries. DeGett. Jeffries. Dela Cruz. McCarthy. Deloro. Jeffries. Delbine. Jeffries. Deluzio. Jeffries. Desaigne. Jeffries. Desjardins. McCarthy. Diaz Pizzino. McCarthy. Diaz Bellart. Diaz Bellart. Dingle. Jeffries. Doggett. Jeffries. Donalds. Donalds. Duarte. McCarthy. Duncan. 
Duncan, Dunn of Florida, Dunn of Florida, McCarthy, Edwards, McCarthy, Elsie, McCarthy, Emmer, McCarthy, Escobar, Jeffries, Eshu, Jeffries, Espayat, Jeffries, Estes, McCarthy, Evans, Jeffries, Ezel, McCarthy, Fallon, McCarthy, Finstra. Coming up shortly is going to be Matt Gates. If Matt Gates votes against him, that's it. Kevin McCarthy will lose this 13th ballot. McCarthy, Finstad, McCarthy, Fishbach, McCarthy, Fitzgerald, McCarthy, Fitzpatrick, McCarthy. Fleischman, McCarthy, Fletcher, Jeffries, Flood, McCarthy, Foster, Jeffries, Fushi, Jeffries, Fox, McCarthy, Lois Frankel, Jeffries, C. Scott Franklin, McCarthy, Frost, Jeffries, Fry, McCarthy, Fulcher, McCarthy, Gates, Jordan. Is. <clears throat> Depending how other people vote, somebody could vote present and lower the threshold, but it looks like Kevin McCarthy just lost the 13th ballot for speaker. The next name to look out for is Bob Good. Garamendi. Jeffries. Garbarino. McCarthy. Mike Garcia. McCarthy. Robert Garcia. Jeffries. Garcia of Illinois. Jeffries. Garcia of Texas. Jeffries. Jimenez, McCarthy, Golden of Maine, Jeffries, Goldman of New York, Jeffries, Gomez, Jeffries, Tony Gonzalez, McCarthy, Bob Good. Vicente Gonzalez, Jeffries, Good of Virginia, that's it, Jordan. Good votes for Jordan. That means it is a done deal for Kevin McCarthy on the 13th ballot. We will be on to a 14th ballot today. McCarthy. Gosar votes McCarthy. Gottheimer. The next name to look out for is going to be Harris. And we'll see if Kevin McCarthy can flip any of these. So far, he's 0 for 5 right now. He's lost, continued to lose. Biggs, Bobert, Crane, Gates, and Good. Next McCarthy. name is Harris. Graves of Missouri. McCarthy. Green of Tennessee. McCarthy. Green of Texas. Jeffries, Green of Georgia, McCarthy, Griffith, McCarthy, Grijalva, Jeffries, Grothman, McCarthy, Guest, 
McCarthy. Guthrie. McCarthy. Hageman. McCarthy. Carter of California. Jeffries. Jeffries. Harris. McCarthy. McCarthy. Wow, so that's the first flip. That's the first flip in Kevin McCarthy's favor. He still won't win this round, but that is the first flip in Kevin McCarthy's favor. Harshbarger. The next one to look out for, by the way, is Matt Rosendale. So not until the R's, and we'll see if Kevin McCarthy had any luck flipping him. But right now, McCarthy is five for six on this last faction of holdout Republicans. Higgins of Louisiana. McCarthy. Higgins of New York. Jeffries. Hill. McCarthy. Himes, Jeffries, Henson, McCarthy, Horsford, Jeffries, Houchin, McCarthy, Houlihan, Jeffries, Hoyer, Jeffries, Hoyle of Oregon, Jeffries, Hudson, McCarthy, Huffman, Jeffries, Heisinga, McCarthy, Hunt, Hunt, Isa, Isa. McCarthy, Ivy, Jeffries, Jackson of Illinois, Jeffries, Jackson of North Carolina, Jeffries, Jackson of Texas, McCarthy, Jackson Lee, Jeffries, Jacobs, Jacobs, Jeffries, James, McCarthy, Jayapal, Jeffries, Jeffries, Jeffries. Johnson of Georgia, Jeffries, Johnson of Louisiana, McCarthy, Johnson of Ohio, McCarthy, Johnson of South Dakota, McCarthy, Jordan, McCarthy, Joyce of Ohio, McCarthy, Joyce of Pennsylvania, Kevin McCarthy, Kem Logger Dove, Jeffries, Captor, Captor, Kane of New Jersey, McCarthy, Keating, Jeffries, Kelly of Illinois, Jeffries, Kelly of Mississippi, McCarthy, Kelly of Pennsylvania, McCarthy, Connor, Jeffries, Jeffries, Kiggins of Virginia, McCarthy, Kildee. Jeffries, Kylie, McCarthy, Kilmer, Jeffries, 
Kim of California. McCarthy. Kim of New Jersey. Jeffries. Krishnamurthy. Jeffries. 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 Custer. Jeffries. Jeffries. Custoff. McCarthy. LaHood. McCarthy. LaLota. McCarthy. LaMalfa. McCarthy. Lamborn. McCarthy. Landsman. Jeffries. Langworthy. McCarthy. Larson of Washington. Jeffries. Larson of Connecticut. Jeffries. Latta. McCarthy. Laturner. McCarthy. Lawler. McCarthy. Lee of California. Jeffries. Lee of Florida. McCarthy. Lee of Nevada. Jeffries. Lee of Pennsylvania. Jeffries. Ledger Fernandez. Jeffries. Lesko. McCarthy. Letlow. McCarthy. Levin. Jeffries. Lou. Jeffries. Lofgren. Jeffries. Loudermilk. McCarthy. Lucas. McCarthy. Luke Kamire. McCarthy. Luna. Luna. McCarthy. Latrell. McCarthy. Lynch. Jeffries. Mace. Mace. Magaziner. Jeffries. Baleotakis. McCarthy. Mann. McCarthy. Manning. Jeffries. Massey. McCarthy. Mast. Mast. McCarthy. Matsui. Jeffries. McBath. Jeffries. McCarthy. McCarthy. <laughs> McCall. McCarthy. McLean. McCarthy. McClintock. McCarthy. McCollum. McCollum. Jeffries. McCormick. McCarthy. McGarvey. Jeffries. McGovern. Jeffries. McHenry. McCarthy. Meeks. Jeffries. Menendez. Jeffries. Main. Jeffries. Muser. McCarthy. Enfume. Jeffries. Miller of Illinois. McCarthy. Miller of Ohio. McCarthy. Miller of West Virginia. McCarthy. Miller Meeks. McCarthy. 
Mills. Mills. Molinaro. McCarthy. Molinar. McCarthy. Mooney. McCarthy. Moore of Alabama. McCarthy. Moore of Utah. Moore of Utah. Moore of Wisconsin. Jeffries. Moran. McCarthy. Morelli. Jeffries. Moskowitz. Jeffries. Moulton. Jeffries. Mervan. Jeffries. Mullen. Jeffries. Murphy. McCarthy. Nadler. Jeffries. Napolitano. Jeffries. Neal. Jeffries. Nagus. Jeffries. Nels. McCarthy. Newhouse. McCarthy. Nickel. Jeffries. Norcross. Jeffries. Norman. McCarthy. None of Iowa. McCarthy. Obernolte. McCarthy. Ocasio Cortez. Jeffries. Ogles. McCarthy. Omar. Jeffries. Owens. McCarthy. Pallone. Jeffries. Palmer. McCarthy. Panetta. Jeffries. Pappas. Jeffries. Pasquel. Pasquel. Jeffries. Payne. Jeffries. Pelosi. Jeffries. Paltola. Jeffries. Pence. McCarthy. Perez. Jeffries. Perry. Perry. The next name to look out for among Republicans is going to be Matt Rosendale. Matt Rosendale. He is the last holdout on this list. Jeffries. Pfluger. McCarthy. Phillips. Jeffries. Pingree. Jeffries. Pocan. Jeffries. Porter. Jeffries. Posey. McCarthy. Presley. Jeffries. Quigley. Jeffries. Ramirez. Jeffries. Raskin. Jeffries. Reschenthaler. McCarthy. Rogers of Washington. McCarthy. Here we go. Rogers Rosen of Alabama. Rosendale's coming up soon. McCarthy. Rogers of Kentucky. McCarthy. Rose. McCarthy. Rosendale. Jordan. Jordan. <clears throat> so Kevin McCarthy fails to secure the vote of six of these Republican Ross. holdouts. Six out of seven, he Jeffries. was able to flip one, and that was Browsing. Harris. 
Otherwise, McCarthy. six is going to be too much. That means McCarthy Roy. will lose on this 13th ballot, and we McCarthy. will need to go on to a 14th ballot for Speaker. Ruiz. Jeffries. Jeffries. Rupersberger. Jeffries. Jeffries. Rutherford. McCarthy. McCarthy. Ryan. Jeffries. Jeffries. Salazar. McCarthy. McCarthy. Salinas. Jeffries. Jeffries. Sanchez. Jeffries. Jeffries. Santos. McCarthy. Sarbanes. Jeffries. Scalise. McCarthy. Scanlon. Jeffries. Schakowsky. Jeffries. Schiff. Jeffries. Snyder. Jeffries. Skolton. Jeffries. Schreier. Jeffries. Swikert. McCarthy. Austin Scott. McCarthy. David Scott. Jeffries. Scott of Virginia. Jeffries. Self. McCarthy. Sessions. McCarthy. Sewell. Jeffries. Sherman. Jeffries. Cheryl. Jeffries. Simpson. McCarthy. Slotkin. Slotkin. Smith of Missouri. McCarthy. Smith of Nebraska. McCarthy. Smith of New Jersey. McCarthy. Smith of Washington. Jeffries. Smucker. McCarthy. Sorensen. Jeffries. Soto. Jeffries. Spamberger. Jeffries. Sparts. McCarthy. Stansberry. Jeffries. Stanton. Jeffries. Stalber. McCarthy. Steele. McCarthy. Stefanik. McCarthy. Style. McCarthy. Stubby. McCarthy. Stevens. Jeffries. Stewart. McCarthy. Strickland. Jeffries. Strong. McCarthy. Swalwell. Jeffries. Sykes. Jeffries. Takano. Jeffries. Tenney. McCarthy. Tanadar. Jeffries. Thompson of California. Jeffries. Thompson of Mississippi. Jeffries. Thompson of Pennsylvania. McCarthy. Tiffany. McCarthy. Timmons. Timmons. Titus. Jeffries. Tlaib. Jeffries. Takuda. Jeffries. Tonko. Jeffries. Torres of California. Jeffries. Torres of New York. 
Jeffries. Trahan. Jeffries. Trone. So the reason they're clapping for him is he just had surgery at 7 a.m. and he was back in the House now uh, at 2 p.m. to vote, but he just had surgery on his shoulder. So he, uh, so that's why they're giving him the round of applause. McCarthy, Underwood, Jeffries, Valadeo, McCarthy, Van Drew. McCarthy, Van Dyne, McCarthy, Van Orden, McCarthy, Vargas, Jeffries, Vasquez, Jeffries, VC, Jeffries, Velasquez, Jeffries, Wagner, McCarthy, McCarthy. Wahlberg, Wahlberg, McCarthy, McCarthy. Waltz, McCarthy, McCarthy. Wasserman awesome Schultz, Jeffries. Jeffries, Waters, Jeffries. Watson Coleman, Jeffries, Weber of Texas, McCarthy, McCarthy. Webster of Florida, McCarthy, Winstrup, McCarthy, Westerman, Westerman. Wexton, Jeffries, Wild, Jeffries, Williams of Georgia, Jeffries, Williams of New York, McCarthy, Williams of Texas, McCarthy, Wilson of Florida, Jeffries, Wilson of South Carolina, McCarthy, Whitman, McCarthy, Womack, McCarthy, Yakum, McCarthy, Zinke, McCarthy. So now they're going to call the names that didn't respond the first time around. The reading clerk will now call the names of the members elect who did not answer the first call of the roll. Adderholt. McCarthy. Emmaday. McCarthy. McCarthy. Arrington. McCarthy. Balterson. McCarthy. Buck. Buck. Klein, McCarthy, McCarthy. 
Correa. Jeffries. Jeffries. Diaz Ballard. McCarthy. Donalds. McCarthy. Duncan. McCarthy. Hunt. Hunt. Captor. Jeffries. Mace. McCarthy. Mills. McCarthy. Moore of Utah. McCarthy. Perry. McCarthy. Slotkin. Jeffries. Timmons. McCarthy. Westerman. McCarthy. They are members elect who did not answer the call of the roll. They may come to the well and vote at this time. So they'll wait for the final holdouts right here, but uh, let's be clear, Kevin McCarthy has lost his 13th attempt to become Speaker of the House. Uh, we'll move on to a 14th ballot. Not sure whether that's going to be today, although it's likely that it will be today, um, or if they'll try to move through the weekend. But Kevin McCarthy has lost on his 13th attempt to become Speaker. Just a little bit of information in terms of what McCarthy had to promise some of these Republican holdouts in order to get their support. And that is, and this is coming from Manu Raju at CNN. He tweeted, uh, Representative Scott Perry, who flipped to McCarthy, told us that they agreed to uh, include language dealing with a debt ceiling increase in the final deal, a major issue in the new Congress, which will have to avo avoid default sometimes next year. Quote, we don't want clean debt ceilings to just go through and keep paying the bills without some counteractive effort to control spending, end quote. The deal also includes language to curb domestic spending at fiscal 22 levels, prompting major concern from defense hawks. So basically, they want to hold the debt ceiling hostage, and if they, and if they don't get what they want, uh, the U.S. will default and effectively crater the entire economy. So that's what we're dealing with right now. I guess we shouldn't be surprised that people who would go to these lengths and humiliate their own party just in an effort to choose speaker would then, uh, would then go to these same lengths uh, to crater the entire economy if they don't get what they want. This is what happens when you embolden hostage takers. You will continue to embolden hostage takers. Six Republicans voting for Jim Jordan. Magic number today with 432 members on the floor as of that latest vote. Uh, is 217. 217 votes needed to secure the speaker's gavel. The six Republicans who voted against... So we'll wait for those final numbers here. We're going to wait for a final tally from the clerk, and then the next thing to happen will likely be a Republican will stand up and nominate Kevin McCarthy, and we'll go into a 14th vote.
or they'll do a motion to adjourn. But I doubt that that'll happen. It seems like they want to try to get this done today and they'll keep pressuring these final Republican holdouts. The issue with these final Republican holdouts is that you've got people like Andy Biggs, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, who are more concerned with their image than any semblance of policy or or anything like that or governing or anything like that. And so if they've all gone on TV and said, you know, you heard Kevin McCarthy earlier today come out on the floor and say, Kevin McCarthy, I'm sorry, Matt Gates. Matt Gates said Kevin McCarthy won't be speaker today. He won't be speaker tomorrow. He won't be speaker this week or this month. So if you think that guy whose sole governmental purpose right now is just to protect his own image is going to flip to McCarthy, you're kidding yourself. So you've got people like that who only care about their image in the Matt Gates, in the Lauren Boberts, in Andy Biggs. And so it's going to be increasingly difficult for Kevin McCarthy to flip some of these people. Uh, his best bet, because he, he can afford to lose four, and it looks like he's down six right now, his best bet is probably going after Crane or Bob Good. Uh, that's what I would imagine. If I had to guess which ones are going to flip, if any, it'll probably be Crane or Good. It's less likely that he'll get Andy Biggs, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, or even Matt Rosendale. Um, but definitely the first three, I think, would be the most difficult. But we'll we'll keep an eye on these and see... Uh, how these votes are going and, and what happens next is going to be uh, pretty significant. With that said, if you've just tuned in and you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. It is the best way to support what I do. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, just hit the subscribe button and you can keep on top of live streams in the future or any other videos that I post on this channel. And I would really appreciate it. So thank you in advance for subscribing. By the way, for those asking who flipped this round, we had one flip. There were seven defections. Now there's six. It's Harris. A Republican named Harris is the last flip this round. He was the only flip this round uh, from the 12th round to the 13th round. Now, as we head into the 14th ballot, uh, we should expect to hear uh, we'll need two Republicans to, to get clawed back by McCarthy. I believe that there are two Republicans heading back to Washington this evening, if reporting is correct. So we'll see what happens. We may have a, a resolution on this today, which would put us four days and well over a dozen ballots in if this finally does happen today. You saw before that um, Democratic lawmaker, uh, I believe it's, uh, David Trone, Democrat from Maryland, had had surgery on his shoulder at 7 a.m. And by 2 p.m. he was back in the chamber uh, so that he could vote for Hakeem Jeffries for speaker. Meanwhile, I, th I think on the Republican side, we're waiting for Ken Buck to come back. There is a, another Republican lawmaker who had a baby who I think is on his way back to the Capitol. A newborn who was born prematurely. And yet it's such a disaster on the Republican side that even this guy who had a prematurely born baby uh, has to now leave his family for the weekend so that he can head back to Washington, D.C., because the party in the majority cannot find the votes to elect their own speaker. If you needed one small example of the dysfunction that the Republican Party is Im immersed in right now. Again, those no votes that we're still waiting on uh, defections from are Biggs, Bobert, Crane, Gates, Good, and Matt Rosendale. So if we can see any of those two come back to McCarthy's side or come to McCarthy's side because they were never there, uh, then we'll see. Uh, then we'll see McCarthy finally win the speaker's gavel. Again, in that 13th round of voting for the speaker, one Republican crossing from a non-McCarthy vote to the McCarthy column, that was Andy Harris. That follows 
the 12th round of voting in which Kevin McCarthy picked up 14 votes and members uh, who changed their vote in that 12th round uh, putting out statements just within the past half hour or so on why they made those changes. Among them, Byron Donalds, the Republican of Florida. Uh, he was one of the names that was nominated uh, by Republicans and for a while uh, was one of those major vote getters outside of Kevin McCarthy. Byron Donalds tweeting this just after 2.30 this afternoon, 2.30 Eastern. The Speaker's office must work for we the people, and I believe that the concessions that we've secured achieve this. Republicans are ready to govern and deliver results on behalf of our constituents and the nation. Another one of those members who changed their vote again in the 12th round was Mary Miller, Mary Miller of Illinois. She tweeted this afternoon, we are negotiating a historic conservative victory to finally stop spending and debt, reckless spending and debt from crushing our children and our grandchildren. We will ensure Republican House cannot do what Senate Republicans did when they passed the disastrous $1.7 trillion omnibus. We must stop Biden. And uh, one more this morning from uh, uh, from another member of Congress who was tweeting uh, about their statement that they put out. Josh Breachin of Oklahoma also putting out a statement, a long statement, explaining his vote. Again, it was 14 members who changed their vote in the 12th round. One more member in the 13th round. It looks like we'll need at least 14 rounds of votes. We'll see what happens. And again, we're waiting for the official tally from that 13th round from the clerk of the House. Live coverage here on C-SPAN. So to build on what I was saying earlier, we will have Republican Wesley Hunt, who had a newborn, is on his way back to D.C. to be able to cast a vote for Kevin McCarthy. That would bring him to 215. Uh, and then Ken Buck, who went home for medical reasons, will also be back. So that'll bring him to 216. And then he'll need two more right now, um, which would be those two defections from those holdouts. So any two of the following people, Andy Biggs, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, uh, Crane, Bob Good, or Matt Rosendale. So uh, as I said before, it's unlikely that uh, Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert are going to be the ones to flip because, I mean, Matt Gates has already been everywhere and Lauren Boebert's been everywhere on TV and standing in the well here. Uh, basically explaining how uh, over their dead bodies would they ever vote for Kevin McCarthy. And, uh, and so I think, you know, given the fact that, that all they really have, I mean, their entire, their entire MO to be in D.C. is just to kind of present themselves as, uh, as these firebrands, quote-unquote, within, uh, within government, uh, I think it'd be highly unlikely that they would go back on their word because that, that's, that's all they have at this point. They're just, they're just basically, they've marketed themselves. Uh, they, don't have, they don't have any legislation to back up what they're doing or anything like that. So highly unlikely that they'll be able to flip uh, Lauren Boebert or Matt Gates. But I'm sure the, the pro-Kevin McCarthy factions right now are working on Crane and Bob Good or Matt Rosendale. So we'll see what happens in this subsequent vote. We are on our way to the 14th vote right now. We should hear from the clerk pretty soon so that we can hear the finalized vote uh, in this 13th ballot. But right now, what we are sure of is that Kevin McCarthy uh, will not be speaker after the 13th ballot and move on to the 14th. Just as a quick aside, completely unrelated, but Lucas Kuntz has announced his candidacy in Missouri running against Josh Hawley. Lucas Kuntz had lost in the primary uh, this past election cycle. He ran a really, really strong campaign, but his primary opponent had dumped a boatload of money into the race, and she eked out a win at the last second. Lucas Kuntz I had on my channel for interviews a number of times. Uh, I'm going to be speaking with him later today, and we'll have that interview out early next week. But that is a big name to throw his hat in the ring against Josh Hawley. Um, he is beatable, and if anybody can beat him, it's Lucas Kuntz. It's going to be a tough race, but Lucas Kuntz is a really, really strong candidate in Missouri. And so hopefully we can uh, have some hope heading into 2024 in a state that would otherwise be off the table, or at least now it'll give Democrats the opportunity to make some gains and uh, force Republicans to spend some money in a state that, that would otherwise be safely red. 
So we'll see what happens in terms of that Lucas Kuntz race. But just a name to keep uh, at top of mind as we head into 2024. He announced early. There is a reason that Lucas Kuntz announced his candidacy on January 6th. It's because Josh Hawley was instrumental in pushing this you know, insurrection effort forward on January 6th. And so, uh, so I think that that's, that's important right there. But just keep that name uh, in the back of your head. When you see Lucas Kuhn's tweet, just help him get the word out uh, because he will be a strong candidate heading into 2024. Kevin McCarthy for Speaker. I came to Washington to change the status quo, said the congressman. And the brave stand of 20 members elect has procured an agreement that makes substantial progress on that score. Our agreement completes a months long effort to cause the Republican conference to reform rules and procedures, commit to specific policy strategies, and improve the distribu distribution of conservative voices across committees. This achievement will help make the People's House truly work for the American people again, and we will hold Mr. McCarthy accountable to his promises. Dan Bishop, in a statement he just released, this vote taking place today on January the 6th, two years since the riot at the United States Capitol, over on C2 right now. Live at the White House, President Biden marking the two-year anniversary since the riot at the United States Capitol. Uh, live coverage of that on C-SPAN 2. Here on C-SPAN, we're getting ready for a potential 14th vote for speaker. This would be the fifth most votes having to be taken for speaker in House history. The longest vote, uh, 133 votes needed back in 1855 during the 34th Congress. It was 63 votes needed back in 1849 during the 31st Congress. 44 votes needed in 1859 during the 36th Congress. 22 votes needed in 1819 during the 16th Congress. And here in 2023, during the 118th Congress, we'll need at least 14 votes for speaker and we'll see how many more. Live coverage here on C-SPAN. See guys, we are witnessing history right now. Republican dysfunction is so great in the year 2023 that you have to go back to the 1800s to find a time when there was less function, less functionality uh, in the governing, in the majority party in the house. So really a once in a more than century, almost once in two centuries phenomenon that we're witnessing right now as uh, as Republicans who have the majority in the House have failed yet again 13 straight votes to elect a speaker. Really bodes well for the future of what we're going to see in the next two years. Uh, I've spoken about this before and I'll speak about it again right now, but um, we we know that one of the bargaining points, one of the bargaining chips that the House Freedom Caucus cashed in on was that Kevin McCarthy basically agreed to give the Freedom Caucus uh, the ability to default on, on, uh, the, on our debt um, and not pass a clean debt ceiling, which would crater the economy effectively. Um, Kevin McCarthy wants to be speaker so bad that now these same lunatics who are holding the speaker's vote hostage will be able to hold the economy hostage to exact whatever concessions that they want. This is the problem with giving the keys to the car to hostage takers is that they recognize and this is this is uh, negative reinforcement. They recognize that the way to get what you want is to continue taking hostages. And so they've done it with this speaker vote. But Kevin McCarthy is such a spineless uh, uh, jello mold that he'll do whatever it takes and give away whatever it takes to get to get his position of power, e even as uh, as impotent as he'll be within that position of power. But now those same people have all the tools they need to hold the U.S. economy hostage to exact whatever concessions they want. Uh, otherwise, we default. So we'll see what happens uh, as we move forward. But, you know, if and when this happens, if and when this fight is going to happen and the U.S. Uh, is at risk of defaulting on on its debt uh, and doesn't raise the debt ceiling, then um, then you can remember back to this moment right here and recognize why it's happening. Uh, it's because McCarthy was so drunk with his own ambition that he was willing to do anything, give anything away so that he can get the votes of these people who are looking for nothing other than just destroying whatever's in their path uh, to get their way. Granted, the only saving grace here is that that uh, rules package that that uh, this default debacles is contained within still has to be voted 
in by all 218 members of, uh, you know, by a majority of the House. So there is the possibility that some moderate Republicans will see this and not want to give the keys to the car to a bunch of, you know, far right extremist lunatics within the Republican Party, these House Freedom Caucus members. So there is a possibility even this rules package won't be able to pass. Uh, but we'll see what happens on that front again. That's going to be the next fight to happen. But hopefully you have some of these moderate Republicans who recognize uh, the willingness of these Republicans right here to destroy whatever's in their path. And they'll understand that if you give them the power to do what they're doing now with the U.S. economy, that that'll bode really poorly for this country. It will crater the U.S. economy. And, and let's be clear, they won't care, just like they don't care now that they're uh, you know, immersed in this once in a more than century phenomenon where, where it takes 14 votes just to 14 ballots just to choose a speaker within their own party. So they will not care. The humiliation doesn't sway them. I've explained this before, but the dysfunction, the dysfunction isn't a bug. It's a feature. This is what they want. They want to be able to point to the dysfunction because they're small government Republicans and they don't want any government. They don't want any IRS. They don't want any EPA. They don't want any Department of Education, Department of the Interior. They don't want these things. They want all of them to fail so they will do their best to break them. And they're doing the same exact thing right here. These, the, the, this dysfunction doesn't hurt some of these Republicans. This dysfunction doesn't hurt the Matt Gates and Lauren Boberts of the party. They traffic in dysfunction. They want to be able to point to everything that happens in government and say, look, we told you it's broken. We told you this place can't work. We told you everything has to be deregulated and moved to the free market and that government can't do anything correctly. Even though when you look beneath the surface, one step beneath the surface, you'll recognize that the people breaking it are these Republicans. So they'll break it themselves and then point to the thing that they just broke as evidence that government can't work, even though they themselves are the ones who made it so that government can't work. This isn't without reason here. So... Um, you know, I hope some of these moderate Republicans and look, we may be we may be dumb to place our faith in moderate Republicans to do what's right. But hopefully some of these moderate Republicans are looking at what's happening right now and recognizing the abject danger in empowering these House Freedom Caucus lunatics with our own economy when this debt ceiling fight uh, comes to a front in however many months. So, again, you know, no one's ever uh, lost money betting on Republicans falling in line, but or betting against Republicans falling in line, but uh, it will be dangerous if these Republicans vote this rules package into effect. But that'll be the next fight we have to worry about. The first fight is just getting uh, getting these members sworn in. From the House clerk from the 13th round of voting. In that round, it was Congressman Andy Harris, the Republican from Maryland who changed his vote uh, from uh, not Kevin McCarthy to the McCarthy column. His tweet uh, just about five minutes ago on uh, his latest vote in the 13th round. Washington and Congress are broken, said the congressman. If the agreement that we were able to finalize over the last few days is implemented, it will be a, the greatest change in how the House operates and becomes much more responsive to the American people in at least two generations. That's a tweet from Andy Harris, uh, congressional reporter uh, M Michael Schnell saying after the current vote is announced, it, Tom Emmer's office says the House will bring up a motion to adjourn today until 10 p.m. So that might be the path forward, uh, an effort to perhaps see if Kevin McCarthy can get back uh, two Republican members who are missing uh, and uh, back in their districts, uh, two members who have voted for him, Congressman Wesley Hunt of Texas and Ken Buck of Colorado, with the hope to get them back and add their votes to the McCarthy column. Of note, today was the first day that Kevin McCarthy achieved more votes than Democrat Hakeem Jeffries, the minority leader, in uh, the 12th round, it was uh, 213 votes for Kevin McCarthy to 211 for Jeffries. In this uh, latest round, the 13th round, it was 214 votes for McCarthy and 212 for Jeffries. Again, those are the unofficial tallies. We're waiting for the official tally from the clerk. Uh, and these live shots that we're showing you on the House floor brought to you by C-SPAN controlled cameras in the chamber. A bit unusual today. We can get a bit more of a flavor of what's going on on the floor, something we don't normally get to do, and C-SPAN certainly taking advantage of it. Uh, three camera operators in 
the United States House uh, showing you in the House of Representatives showing you all these angles. We also have access to that overhead shot that you've seen on occasion looking down on the House floor, uh, but uh, with no speaker elected and controlling uh, the cameras in the chamber, C-SPAN is uh, bringing you uh, all these conversations, all these sidebars, uh, and have been doing it all week long. Live coverage of the vote for the Speaker of the House here on C-SPAN. a shot of George Santos before. This may be pretty boring for George Santos compared to that time that he scaled Everest and stormed the beaches in Normandy. Definitely can't hold up to that. Probably just as exciting as when he won the second Super Bowl. But, you know, not all of us can have as storied of a past as he does. So we are waiting now for the clerk to read the final tally for the 13th vote for Speaker. Kevin McCarthy has lost on this ballot. He failed to reach that 218 threshold. He was able to flip one out of the seven defectors. So now we have six more. He needs to be able to flip two of those, or at least flip one and then have one vote present, for example, or have two of them vote present, which may be more likely than actually flipping them. But, uh, and that would lower the threshold by virtue of voting present. So we're waiting on any movement from Biggs, Bobert, Crane, Gates, Good, and Rosendale. So those are the six defectors right now. That's what's holding up this process. We're headed to vo vote number 14 for Kevin McCarthy to be able to be elected Speaker of the House, despite Republicans having gained a majority in this, uh, in this last uh, midterm election. So we should be hearing that tally any moment now. And uh, then we're on to vote number 14. I've said this before, but I, I anticipate that we probably won't see any type of a flip from Matt Gates or Lauren Boebert. I imagine that Republicans are working right now on Crane and Good. If they can get those two, then they'll probably have what they need to, uh, to get Kevin McCarthy elected. This may be the last vote. It all depends what's happening behind the scenes and how intransigent these uh, Republican holdouts actually are. So in terms of how much longer this will take, I'm not exactly sure. It could be this very next vote, or we could be here till Monday. Who knows? I don't think anybody would have anticipated being here until Friday, uh, 14 ballots in, but here we are. Uh, look, I don't know that I would vote against dysfunctionality within the Republican Party. So we may be here a long time, but this could be this next vote could be the vote that, uh, that confirms it for Kevin McCarthy. So just stick around and see. We should have an answer shortly. And if you're not yet subscribed to this channel and you want to follow along with these live streams or subsequent live streams, if this does have to go into another day, a fifth day or sixth day or seventh day, then subscribe to this channel and uh, you'll be able to keep on top of my live streams that way. It doesn't cost you anything, but it is the best way to support what I do. So just hit the subscribe button on this screen. I would appreciate it. Again, we're just waiting for the clerk to announce the final tally. What we'll have from there, I doubt we'll have a motion to adjourn. So what we'll have from there is a Republican stand up and nominate Kevin McCarthy as speaker. We'll have a Democrat stand up and nominate Hakeem Jeffries as speaker. And uh, it's unlikely that any other Republicans, including Matt Gates or Lauren Boebert, will nominate someone else. It doesn't seem like, uh, like that's the way things are going. But... What will be important is to see what happens with these six Republican defectors in that party, Biggs, Boebert, Crane, Gates, Good, and Rosendale, and if they're able to claw any of them back to the McCarthy side. So again, this could be it. The 14th uh, ballot coming up could be the last ballot of the day, or, or we can look back at this time 
in all of our naivety and uh, as we're as we're neck deep in like the 30th ballot somewhere days from now so who knows like we're about to start right now it looks like the clerk has the final tally so she'll speak up read the final tally announce that Kevin McCarthy does not have the votes to become speaker and then we should expect another Republican to stand up and nominate Kevin McCarthy and will be in the 14th ballot the tellers agree in their tallies that the total number of votes cast is 432 of which the Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the state of California has 214 <laughs> The Honorable Hakeem Jeffries of the state of New York has received 212. The Honorable Jim Jordan of the state of Ohio has received six. No member elect Having received the majority of the votes cast, a speaker has not been elected. For what purpose does the gentleman from Louisiana rise? Madam Clerk, with great appreciation for the job that you and your staff have been doing. Madam Clerk, I move that the House stand adjourned until 10 p.m. tonight. The wow. question now occurs on the motion of the gentleman from Louisiana. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. And the opinion. I'm in the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Well, Madam Clerk, I request the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and noes will rise. A sufficient number has arisen. The yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. All right. So they'll have 15 minutes to, uh, to submit their votes to see if we'll adjourn until 10 p.m. Eastern tonight. So, hope you guys didn't make plans. Well, you don't have to watch, but I have to be here. So, this is what I'm doing on Friday night, uh, considering this, this uh, vote to adjourn actually passes. So, we'll see what happens. With that said, if this vote does pass, uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can be notified when I go live again, if and when I go live again this evening, and uh, we'll see if Kevin McCarthy is able to pull it off. This is uh, a vote to adjourn right now until 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. So we have about 14 minutes left of voting. And if uh, it's just a simple majority on this one, depending on which side wins, uh, we'll see Republicans should have no problem voting to adjourn until this evening. So depending on which side wins, uh, we'll see what happens and we'll, we'll see whether we're going to have a, a 14th ballot right now or if we're going to have a 14th ballot tonight. Republicans are hoping to get this done by this weekend. I believe that one of the reasons that they're voting to adjourn is, is uh, A, so that they can wait for two of their uh, Republican representatives to head back to D.C. who were gone for medical reason and a childbirth. And another one is to try to flip some of these Republican holdouts. And those holdouts include Andy Biggs, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, Bob Good, Matt Rosendale, and Crane. So we'll see what happens on that front. Uh, but we do have a few minutes left of voting here. You just need a simple majority to win this vote. And this vote would be a, to adjourn until 10 p.m. Eastern, 
uh, 7 p.m. Pacific. So about six and a half hours from now. So if that if they are able to pass this motion to adjourn, I would end this live stream uh, until this evening. Some of the holdouts and perhaps uh, get some of the absent members, the two absent Republican members who previously voted for Kevin McCarthy back to Washington, back to the House floor in the hopes of closing out the speaker's vote and achieving the votes necessary. Robert Costa of CBS News reporting this via Twitter. One of McC McCarthy's top allies has told CBS that meetings are being planned for the rest of the afternoon and the evening in private with those remaining holdouts. The hope is to adjourn sooner than later to get those going. We have to close this out and it's not going to happen on the floor. That's the quote from one of McCarthy's top allies, according to Robert Costa. Again, right now, the math has uh, 217 votes needed for a speaker. If the two Republicans who are not on the floor, Ken Buck of Colorado uh, and Wesley Hunt of Texas, if they return to Washington, uh, as uh, some reporting says they will by tonight, uh, and they become part of the quorum, then 218 votes would be needed for Kevin McCarthy to achieve the speakership. There are 12 minutes left in this vote, this motion to adjourn. And again, it's a motion to adjourn until 10 p.m. Eastern tonight. Live coverage of that vote and images from the House floor, courtesy of three C-SPAN controlled cameras in the chamber here, live on C-SPAN. So for those just tuning in, we have 11 minutes left in this motion to adjourn. They want to uh, delay this until 10 o'clock tonight. That would be 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific. Um, just as one last, uh, one last display of masochism here, because there is nothing better to do on a Friday night than watch the 14th straight attempt by Republicans to elect a speaker, even though they have a majority in the House. So I'll go full on the screen so that you can see the votes more easily. Uh, if your eyesight is anything like mine is, this is probably a little bit tough to read. So I'll go full on the screen for a few minutes here.
Less than five minutes left in this vote on a motion to adjourn. It would be to adjourn the House until 10 p.m. Eastern tonight. In past adjournment votes, there have been uh, some Republican members who have joined with Democrats voting no on adjournment. That doesn't look to be the case this time. Uh, currently, 217 votes for an adjournment, 211 against adjournment, six members still not voting. The Kevin McCarthy team looking to secure the final votes needed to secure the speakership in the hours between now and 10 p.m., an expected 14, 14th vote on speaker at 10 p.m. Eastern. Caitlin Collins of CNN reporting this via Twitter just a few minutes ago. Kevin McCarthy uh, telling CNN that he is confident that he will have the votes to become speaker by tonight. Asked why, he said, because I counted. Just a few minutes left in this vote on a motion to adjourn. Again, uh, we were showing you live coverage through C-SPAN control cameras on the House floor. Three C-SPAN camera operators showing you all the angles, all the conversations, and have been showing you that all week long. We should be hearing uh, on a final vote total on this motion to adjourn in just a few minutes. Stick with us on C-SPAN. So this motion to adjourn will pass. Republicans are already already have more votes than Democrats. Uh, Democrats would need to supersede them. So, uh, so this motion to adjourn will pass. We will be back tonight for the 14th ballot at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific. So use the bathroom, get some food, drink some water, and then uh, head on back here so we can see if Kevin McCarthy has finally managed to do whatever it takes uh, to flip these last few holdouts in his conference. So far, we know right now that there have been deals given to, uh, to these holdouts right now in the House Freedom Caucus that include um, basically giving them the ability to not pass a clean debt ceiling increase without, uh, without including some of their priorities uh, in it as well, which means they'll hold the U.S. economy hostage by threatening to default if they don't get what they want. And I guess we shouldn't be surprised that people who've kind of made a name for themselves holding holding uh, their own party hostage here in this vote for speaker are also willing to hold the U.S. economy hostage to get whatever they want to exact whatever concessions they need uh, in that upcoming debt ceiling increase uh, vote. So, so that will be uh, exceedingly dangerous for the country. Hopefully there are a few Republicans, if this does happen, if, if he's able to secure the support from these last few Republican holdouts, if this is the deal that's ultimately on the table for those Republicans, Hopefully we have some moderate Republicans who recognize that giving those people, those like insurrectionist lunatics, the, the ability to, to hold the U.S. economy hostage so that they can exact whatever concessions they want to exact, um, hopefully they recognize that that's not a good idea and they'll vote against that rules package. So, but I mean, this is just one more example of the danger of putting these people in charge. They are so dysfunctional, so dangerous that not only can they not even manage to choose a leader from among their own conference that has the majority in the House, but even if they are able to get the majority, um, they're going to be so dangerous when it comes to our own economy, raising the debt ceiling, all of this stuff, that, that uh, there is a good possibility that the U.S. can default. Uh, something obviously we didn't see when Democrats were in control. When Democrats were in control, they used their power to lower the cost of prescription drugs and, uh, and, and fund efforts to combat climate change. They got free COVID tests and, and vaccines. They uh, passed a gun safety bill. They passed the CHIPS Act so that we can bring semiconductor chip manufacturing back to the United States. They passed the PACT Act to give health care to veterans. What's the first priority of the Republicans? Negotiating a way to hold the U.S. economy hostage so that they can get some more concessions uh, with, the, uh, with the U.S. debt limit increase looming. So, you know, the asymmetry is, uh, is pretty staggering here, but the danger is really put on full display of having these people in power. It's almost better just to have these constant ballots where Republicans vote and fail to elect their own speaker because at least they won't be able to govern yet. At least none of these members are actually sworn in so that they could be able to do the damage that they want to do.
So with that said, we have no more time remaining in this vote to adjourn. It's 219 to 212. So they'll find they'll tally this uh, this total here and we'll be back this evening. Have all members elect voted? Yes. Does any member elect wish to change a vote? No. On this vote, the yeas are 220, the nays are 212. The motion is adopted. Accordingly, the House stands adjourned until 10 p.m. tonight. So that's 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific. Before you leave, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted as soon as I go live. I'll try to go live a little bit before the time of the vote so we can just do a quick rundown of everything that's going on. But again, please make sure to subscribe if you're watching right now. This way you'll get an alert as soon as I go live again and we can watch what may very well be uh, the last ballot here tonight as Republicans bring back two of their members, Ken Buck and Wes I uh, can't remember his last name, but um, one had a medical issue, one had uh, a baby born. So those two members will come back and then they're looking to flip two out of the six defectors from within the Republican ranks here. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button so that you can catch tonight's uh, continuation of this effort to uh, elect Kevin McCarthy speaker of the, the Republican conference here of the House. And, uh, and uh, thanks again, and I'll see you in a few hours.